Georgia High School Association Football Championships presented by the Governor's Office of Highway Safety, reminding you to buckle up Georgia. We've got another thriller here at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. It's the Class 3A Championship. Savannah Christian, the Raiders, taking on the Saints of Cedar Grove in this 3A title match, and we can't wait to get this one going. Three more games to go here in downtown Atlanta as we close out our final of three days of competition. Larry Smith here with Sam Crenshaw. Uh, last time, partner, you and I were together 24 hours ago. It was a game that would not end. Three <laughs> overtimes before Pierce County finally took the two-way title. Everyone sees us. I had a security guard walk in and say, listen, Get this one done in regulation. Like, we have some control over it. We got no control over it. These guys are playing for this. It's the 15th game, right? They're going to stay here as long as it takes, but hopefully it won't be as long as yesterday. Yeah, we think, though, another thriller is uh, on the way here. And let's get right to it. How about some players to watch, starting with Savannah Christian? Very talented football teams, both. Let's talk about things going on one with Savannah Christian. We start with Zoe Smalls. And this guy has impressive numbers. Look at what he's done. And 30 touchdowns this season. Wow. He knows how to finish, so watch for number four when they're on offense. On the defensive side, we got a guy who's a big-time hitter. Talk about the stats. Look at the number of tackles for Jaden Miles. He's a guy that gets things done defensive. You see him some on the offensive side of the ball as well. Our Savannah Christian today. Just some tremendous athletes uh, for the Raiders. Meanwhile, for Cedar Grove, they're in this game for the third year in a row. So some veterans who kind of know what this is all about. And you start with their quarterback, right? He's been here before. He knows about the state championship game. He's coming off another very, very impressive season. And he's ready to lead the Saints offensive attack today. You want to watch for him if you get a chance to. Colson has done some tremendous things for this team the last couple of seasons. There's another look at him right there. He's all excited, ready to go. E.J. Colson, look at his numbers there. And he's committed to uh, to Central Florida, mm -hmm. but having an impressive season once again. And then over on defense as well as we take a look at the Saints, another player that's named that we've called quite a bit, uh, not just, uh, uh, again, this year, but again, the past couple of years. Wesley Brown, over 100 tackles for this regular season, a lot of tackles for loss, and a Navy commit. This guy's a total package. Watch for him on the defensive side of the ball today for Cedar Grove. Okay, just some a uh, couple of outstanding teams. We'll get into their resumes here a bit later. But first, the Breda Pest Management keys to the game. You want to watch the tackling in space if you're Savannah Christian because you know the skill talent that Cedar Grove brings and, and you already talked about the quarterback and what he likes to do. Eliminate turnovers. You got to be error free. You want to give yourself a chance to win this game. If you see the Grove, special teams have to be extra special today. And that's something that Coach Adams talked about. And also win first down and have good things happen and that sets things in motion you know as far as the rest of the possession. Yeah, he was saying great philosophy in this. If you win first downs on offense and defense, you're doing pretty well at that, so no question about it. So the third member of our team is down on the field, Cody Chapin. Hey, Cody, what do you got? Hey, good morning, Sam and Larry. Good afternoon at this point. These two teams have taken different roads to get here, not just talking about their schedule this season, but literally roads. Savannah Christian made that four-hour trek up I-16 yesterday, and in fact, Coach Baker Woodward brought his team inside the bins to watch the 6A game last night just so they could get used to things. Cedar Grove, as we've said, they've been there, done that. They actually now have a routine that they're playing since they're playing in their sixth title game in the last eight years. And part of that routine includes watching old state title games the night before. I'm hoping they didn't watch all of them. They'd have been up all night last night. It should be a fun one here tonight. Send it back upstairs. Yeah, that would be a long night, Cody. No question about it. Look forward to this. And uh, boy, what a job they have done over the years, as you've said. And here in the title game for the third year in a row, as we take a look at Savannah Christian coming in, they've been trying to get here for years. Boy, they yeah, they, they get to the quarterfinals, they get into the playoffs, uh, but they just can't get to Atlanta. But finally, they are here, the Raiders, and we've got a lot to talk about. They have been road Raiders, and Cody will have more on that uh, in just a bit coming up here. By the way, Savannah Christian, as they huddle up right now, and they are the visitor wearing their white jerseys. Uh, they did win the toss, and they have opted to receive first. And so we will have that for you in just moments. There's a look at Coach Baker Woodward. It's six seasons there at Savannah Christian. They've been on the staff at Benedictine, so he knows about winning and success and guys are winning state championships. But now he's the head man, and they're getting set to play for a state championship here today. And on the other side, there's John Adams, third year, 32 and 11 for him, trying again for his second championship. He's been a, an assistant coach, uh, so he's been a part of uh, several titles with this Cedar Grove program. And, uh, of course, he was the coach last year on the sidelines, the controversial uh, touchdown play at the end of the game uh, of this championship that gave Sandy Creek 
uh, the title. We'll talk more about that later on. By the way, again, we remind you, we do have a replay as a result in this championship round. We've seen it come into play in so many very good ways already, yeah. to make, just to make sure that, that the call is right. Absolutely, absolutely. And, we, you know, we want to applaud the effort to do that and the work that went into it and the way it has gone so far. There may be some bumps along the way, but overall it has been smooth and great to see for our state championship. Absolutely. Well, opening kickoff brought to you by Buckle Up Georgia. Seatbelt saved lives. Kick is taken there by the Raiders. Zoe Smalls takes that for the 19-yard gain, and that's where Savannah Christian will begin this championship tilt right there. First and 10 with very good field position out of their own 41-yard line. They're going to start on offense with their quarterback, Blaze Thomas. And he has good numbers, not the kind of numbers that you see from Cedar Grove, but he does have impressive numbers for this season. Will has some, has some turnovers, though. There are some interceptions that he gave up, and he can run the ball as well. And you see there almost 1,900 yards through the air, 14 touchdowns, four more on the ground. A couple of 1,000-yard rushers will be watching. Nice sweep there, and that's one of them. Kenry Wall, and just like that, the big gain for the first down, and well into Cedar Grove territory. How about that for a start of this 3A title tilt? You got a pair of 1,000-yard running backs. Pick your poison today. Which one are you going to try to stop because the other one's going to get you? Here's Wall with a nice sweep. It didn't have any contain, and he gets to, gets to the edge. Big pick up in the first down. And Coach Woodward talking about uh, the, the, the hogs up front, the horses, really gave them a lot of credit in terms of uh, just the way that they block up front and create these gaps for this outstanding running game. Quick stop in play. They kind of reset the ball there. Another run up the middle for Zoe Smalls. Let's take a look at the starting lineup presented to you by Regions. Get back in the bank with Regions Bank. Get back in the game with Regions Bank. Starting offense, there are the uh, five that we talked about earlier on. Luke Gunn and Lewis also both three-year starters up front. And we'll look at the receivers. Well, David Busey, number nine, by the way, he is a, a South Carolina commit. We'll talk more about him in a moment, but there is your starting lineup for the offense for Savannah Christian as we saw Wall very quickly the run there for a short gain if anything on second down will bring up third and about five you look at Blaze Thomas just a sophomore one of the younger members of this offense Jordan Dillon is a freshman number 72 the offensive lineman and we've got a jump so that may be encroachment on the defense. If so, that's a first down for Savannah Christian. Encroachment. Defense. Five-yard penalty. Penalty results in a first down. Jason James, a referee. You can see there all the young men in stripes working this game. We appreciate his work and everyone uh, throughout the year that uh, does a great job of uh, serving as officials and referees of our youth sports, and we continue to uh, hope everyone continues with that as well. We need you as Absolutely. a part of this. <laughs> our, young, our young people need you. Yeah, that's right. That's our right. young people need you. So first down on the five-yard penalty. Up the middle again, that's Smalls, and this time he's met by a wall. <laughs> Let's take a look at that Cedar Grove starting lineup on defense brought to you by Regents. Get back in the game with Regents Bank. Beckford Mosley. Kearns and Parks up front, and you saw them in action right there. Brown, Bass, and Smith are your linebackers. And on defense, Roland, Forney, Slaughter, and Clements. Uh, coach says has a high ceiling and soft hands as well. Back there is one of the quarterbacks. Second down run. Again, haven't passed the ball yet, and they don't have to. Off to the races and going. And is he in? No, they're going to say he's out right there at the one-yard line. But what a run by David Busey, the future South Carolina Gamecock. Wow, in the handoff, picks it right there, gets a good block, sheds the defender there, and he's off to the races. Well, they had to make the stop there to save the touchdown. A good spot there out of the two for Busey. 26-yard pickup, makes it first and goal now. Thomas under center. Smalls, touchdown! <laughs> Savannah Christian draws first blood. What an opening drive to start this game. Yeah. A methodical drive by Savannah Christian. And look at how they finish. 
Got the opening right there just enough for Zoe Smalls. We talked about him 30 touchdowns this season. This guy knows how to finish when he's near the goal line. And he does it all for the Raiders. Uh, he's uh, nearing 2,000 all-purpose yards coming into this game. Ethan Bird is on for the point after. He gets that to go. And just over two minutes into this game, the Raiders very quickly take that. They had great field position starting at the at the 41 yard line and wasted no time getting down there. A series of runs, six runs is what it took. In fact, here are the details of the scoring drive brought to you by the governor's red ribbon campaign. Six plays again, all of them runs, 59 yards, and took them as 207. One more look, though, at that run by Tony, or make that by David Busey, number nine. Look at this camera angle here. And uh, Sam, to your point, you can't arm tackle these guys. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> you got to do something. You got to you gotta wrap some guys up and get down, get some guys on the ground. But once again, Smalls knows how to finish. But that's the thing about Busey and the number of ways that they use him. They can line him up a lot of ways, it's wide out. They can bring him in and take handoffs as well. And you saw some of his versatility right there. Yeah, he's a receiver actually at the next level. He's been recruited for defense. And so we'll get a chance to see him on that side of the ball here momentarily as it is now Cedar Grove's turn. Bowden Walker is a name we'll talk quite a bit. That was number zero you saw right there. Caden Cheatham with the kick. And it's short, keeping it away from those speed guys back in the back. Still fighting for yards. Whoa, what an effort there. Yep. Sashawan Smith, nice return there. But you can see why Coach Adams says special teams are important, right? You know, and he probably knows that they're going to probably have those short kicks, those pooch kicks to keep the ball away from, from Walker. You still got to make the most of it, though. So here come the Saints to start their first offensive possession of the game. And the player that Sam was talking about in the pregame here, Elliot Colson, again, Jersey number one. He's committed already to Central Florida. He's uh, only a junior. A lot of football left. What a season he's had. 4.0 GPA, by the way. Toss and the split and the first down. It stays on its feet, and he's still going, trying to get to the end zone, and he does! 64 yards, and he's still running. Malachi Miller. Miller, one of the more versatile players as well. They line him up a lot of ways, find a way to get the hand, gets his hand on the, on the football. Boy, he got it that time and just ran away from everybody. Would not be denied the goal line. And just like that, Cedar Grove has answered. Yeah, he's a wide receiver, but Coach uh, Adams says he will line up at running back, and you see why. They get that kind of speed out into space. Wow. Alex Brock lining up for the extra point, and just like that, <laughs> we're going to catch our breath and yeah, allow you really. to do the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> really, we need it. <laughs> My goodness. Malachi Miller, 64 yards. Strap in, folks. <laughs> Football Fridays in Georgia on GPB is presented by the Governor's Office of Highway Safety, reminding you to be safe on every trip. Buckle up, Georgia. Sweetheart, please don't forget to wear your seatbelt. I got it, Mom. It's a really nice day living in the right space. Breathe in your face, got me feeling so good away. Blink of an eye, so many tomorrows can disappear. Buckle up for your future. Every trip, every time. A message from the Governor's Office of Highway Safety. High school seniors, your Georgia match letters have been mailed and the possibilities are endless. Visit your student dashboard on gafutures.org to see which of the 45 colleges and universities made your list and claim your spot today. In lively towns and peaceful rural areas, Georgia's electric membership cooperatives are on a mission to provide a different kind of electricity. Our not-for-profit, member-owned EMCs are focused on making life better for members. At private residences, farms, and thriving businesses, we work for you. 
generating safe, reliable, affordable electricity, giving back to local programs, serving our members to make life brighter. Georgia's EMCs, so much more than electricity. Uh, here we go, Malachi Miller uh, enjoying seeing himself up on the big board and seeing all the fans there <laughs> <laughs> from Cedar Grove. Here's your scoring drive. Uh, boy, <laughs> very quickly, not much to say. One play, 64 yards, took 13 seconds of scoring drive brought to you by the Governor's Red Ribbon campaign. Let's go down to Cody. Yeah, after that first Savannah Christian drive, John Adams, the head coach for Cedar Grove, who also coaches the defense, tried to bring his guys over and get them huddled around the monitor, make some adjustments, see how they can slow down the Raiders' rushing attack. <laughs> but as soon as they sat down, they had to get back up. They only had, like you said, 13 seconds to make some adjustments. So we'll see how they do on the fly here as Savannah Christian set to get the ball back. Yes, I mean, that's, that's the kind of fireworks you like, right? You try to get your defense set, and then, oh, well, okay, we're back to even again, just like that. So let's get back at it, guys. Hope you brought your track shoes. <laughs> My goodness. No shortage of, of offense here in the opening minutes. A couple of teams had some interesting and very challenging roads to get here, and they have done that to get to downtown Atlanta. Brock ready to kick off after the explosive touchdown. Squibb keep it away from the returners back there. Smalls has it anyway, doesn't matter. So Smalls, one of the do-it-all players here for Savannah Christian on the return, and they'll have a, once again good field position at the 32 to start their second offensive series. Well, we talked about that first offensive possession for Savannah Christian and how methodical everything went with them running the football. Um, my goodness, though, you want to see how they respond to what Cedar Grove just did. Striking back lightning fast. See what they're made of here. Thomas under center. Man in motion is Wall. Smalls with the carry going nowhere. Went into the guys up front there. 54, Kyle Mosley, and 51, Chase Kearns. We're there to greet him. And that front four, Coach Adams calls his four horsemen. He said they really get after the quarterback and they play the run well as well. And they made some adjustments after uh, there were some holes in their line in that first drive. Nothing doing there. Second down and nine. Thomas attempting his first pass. Going nowhere. Chase Kearns on the sack. Kearns, big time player all season long. 59 tackles, 15 tackles for loss, and here's another one. Eight yard loss on the sack. One more look at it here. The senior that John Adams said really had a breakout season last year and has really built on that here in 2023. Brings up third and 17. Line to gain is the 42 for a first down for Savannah Christian. Logan Brooking is in motion. Pass is deep and nice attempt there. What about a tough catch as it was right at the sideline, trying to get the ball in the hands of Kenry Wall, but it's incomplete. And Savannah Christian will have to punt. You have number 12, Demarcus Clemens, right there with him, stride for stride. You take another look and watch. Wall tries to make a play, gets a hand on it. Yeah. Good thrown ball, just a little long. So Christian Johns is on to punt, the junior. And a good look at Bowden Walker. Bobbled snap. Gets it away, but it's short. Takes a Raiders bounce inside the 40, still rolling, and they'll finally down it right there about the 36-yard line. 39 yards on the kick uh, for Christian Johnson. What an effort there because that was really, yeah. that was a low snap, kind of bobbled it. You got the black shirts coming at you. Did good to get that one away. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> but once again, we talk about one of the keys of the game, winning first down. And you saw that happen for the Cedar Grove defense, right? 
stonewalling that run game on the very first down. Yeah. You know, change that script, get them out of the things they like to do. This will be second series for Cedar Grove, second play from scrimmage for Cedar Grove. Walker is the carry. And he gets a couple of yards. Good effort there on defense as we take a look at their starting lineup presented to you by Regions Bank. Get back in the game with Regions Bank. And the up front for Cedar Grove, you see Slaughter there. He's a four-year starter. Thornton, by the way, committed to go to Anderson College. And behind them, some of the skill positions, we talked about Walker. He's a Georgia commit, only a junior. Andrew Leslie also, 33 catches on the year at the receiver position. Second and seven. Walker with the spin move, but nice job there by Isaiah Redmond to bring him down as we take a look at the, the defensive starting lineup brought to you by Regents. Get back in the game with the Regents Bank. Logan Brooking we've talked about. His dad, Keith, familiar with the Atlanta area, former Falcon. Isaiah Redmond also was on that tackle just then. David Busey, we mentioned, is going to South Carolina. Reed Penrose, also a linebacker. Stone, Hudspath, McIvory, and Wall are your back four in that backfield. Third and two, trying to get to that yellow stripe. Second effort, and it looks like they're going to give it to him. Bowden Walker again, and boy, what a year he's had. He's such an outstanding athlete. Coach said that he really could be their best receiver and could be their best linebacker as well. That's just the, the kind of talent he brings on the football field for these Saints. Wow, running it there. You know, on the stop that time is 52, Isaiah Redman. Number one, Jaden Miles. We talked about him from the very outset. He got to be doing a lot of hitting for Savannah Christian. As well, just past the 46-yard line, first and 10 now. They get their first first down of this game. Colson looking to throw under pressure. Big 76, Davian Melton, the sophomore there to meet him, and a host of other white jerseys for the, the sack. They came after. They put some heat on Colson. Rolling out. Here comes the pressure. We saw the Damian Guyton there, number 18 as well. Quick pass in the hands once again of that man, Miller. He already has one touchdown. This time it's a pass. Helmet coming off, and so he'll have to sit down as the rules go for one play. By the way, on that last play, you saw one big 95 in white right there in the middle. That's Elijah Griffin. We'll be talking a lot about him today. Yes, Peter we Grove, will. Number eight must come out for one play for his helmet coming off. Only a junior, but in some uh, of recruiting uh, worlds, he is the number one prospect in the country in the class of 2025. And you're going to see why. That was one example right there, fighting through his block and forcing Colson out of the pocket that led to the sack. Third and three, Colson complete for the first down. That's to Devin Carter, and they'll move the chains. Nice job by the Saints. Nice catch by Carter. He holds on after taking a hit there from Miles. That's Ralph Boyd took a hit right there, but holds on to it, and the chains move. Quickly now on first down, finding a seam. That's Walker. Big gain on first down. Bowden Walker. 1,400 yards rushing on the season. He averages 6.3 yards per rush. Gets nine on that one, second and one, and it's a hurry up offense now. Hand off there to Walker, but no going nowhere. Jaden Miles, a uh, player that Sam told you to watch, is uh, in the backfield and uh, the tackle for the loss. He is making hits all over the place. You know, he's not the biggest guy out there, but I tell you what, he's got a nose for the ball. And wherever it is, number one seems like he's going to show up. Here he is right from the very beginning. Loss of five on the play, so now third and six. And... Encroachment. Defense. Five-yard penalty. Down remains third. All right, get those five yards back. Hey, Jason James on the call. Ninth play of the drive coming up here for Cedar Grove. Back to their defense, stopped Savannah Christian three and out the last time. Plenty of time on the play clock. Colson 
to Walker. Powers his way through. He's seen just a one yard. He got more first down for the Saints. He doesn't mind making the contact, though. No. How about that hit? You can hear that up here. Wow. Boom. Doesn't mind it. No. <laughs> Couple of future SEC competitors. South Carolina versus Georgia. Colson on the run, escapes. Boy, he is elusive. Talked about just again, the dual threat quarterback doing so much for Cedar Grove. And there he is, showing you why. Big pickup brings up second down. Mm -hmm. Got a long eight. So about a yard to go for a first. Colson fakes the pass. Tackled, but finds his way across the first down marker for another play that moves the change for Cedar Grove, very slowly moving their way down the field. Here's the offensive line. He finds the crease, finds the room, and goes in and gets the first down. Nice shot there by Busey. Boy, he is everywhere. A bit of linebacker for Savannah Christian. Colson keeps it. Falls forward to get past the 10. Cedar Grove in the red zone for the first time. Two quick touchdowns early on in this game if you're joining us a couple of minutes late. <laughs> yeah, really. Savannah Christian just took only six yards to go, or six plays, I should say, to go 59 yards for their touchdown. And then it was followed by a one play, 64 yard run by Miller for Cedar Grove 13 seconds later. And that's where we stand here in the first quarter. Cedar Grove trying to win their second title in the last three years. All under coach John Adams. Bowden Walker. Made it look easy. Touchdown. Wasn't even touched. Ten yards for the score. And the Saints have their first lead. Here's another look at it. The thing is open up, gets a nice block. And gets in for the score. Nicely done. Kyle Mosley up there throwing that block 54. Mm -hmm. Alex Brock on for the extra points. And it's a 14-7 lead here for the Saints. Two more looks at it. Here's a great angle from up high. And there you see how it opened up and just walk right through there. Yeah, they made that look easy. Scored 27 touchdowns in the season, and, you know, just like Smalls, he's got a nose for the goal line. Yeah, we are just getting started. A lot of fireworks are coming up here in downtown Atlanta. Scoring drive numbers brought to you by the Governor's Red Ribbon Campaign. 13 plays, nice methodical drive for the Saints. 64 yards, took them 5 minutes, 16 seconds to get their first lead here in this Class 3A championship game. Busy, busy day here at the Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Class 5A game is coming up next. Creekside versus Coffee in the 7A championship game is scheduled to kick at 7 p.m. tonight. So kick back and enjoy. We're here for quite a while. By the way, Walker already 29 yards on seven carries and the touchdown there for the Saints. Wow, that didn't take long. No, <laughs> it didn't. <laughs> didn't take long at all. So 14-7, Cedar Grove now on top. A team that started the season two and five. We'll get more to that in just a bit. Won seven straight games. Another squib kick trying to keep it away from Smalls. They do. But boy, you know, when you do that, you, you give them fantastic field position every time trying to hit the ball away from Zoe Smalls. That's got to be the confidence in your defense, right? Yeah. You got to be your confidence in your defense. Yeah. Let's go down to Cody. Olsen, the quarterback for Cedar Grove orchestrating that 13 play scoring drive and he's committed to that man. Gus Malzahn is on the sidelines watching his quarterback talking about Colson. He's 4.0 GPA. Coach John Adams loves his IQ and he says on his Twitter account he is 100,000 percent committed to UCF. Safe to say he's fully on the Gus bus. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah. In other words, I'm going to Big 12, baby. Leave me alone. Don't try to come in and change my mind later. Nice pass here, catch and run. Busey, the star receiver, gets that. Positive yards, gets about six. 
Brings up second down. Talking to Coach Adams, we look at this replay here. Uh, nice job by Thomas to avoid the rush and kind of the sidearm Mahomes throw to get rid of that. He talked about 15 college coaches at the school last week alone. Last week. Smalls on second down. About a yard short of the marker. It brings up third. As I always like to say, if you're not recruiting in Georgia, you don't really want to win. That's right. <laughs> you don't. If no. you're not recruiting Georgia yeah. talent, you don't, yeah. you don't really want to win. Yeah. On Saturdays and Sundays, you can see so many familiar names. Absolutely. On your TV screen. Look at the total yards right there and a penalty. I think they might have drawn the Saints off again. Encroachment. Defense. Five-yard penalty results in a first down. And that's a second first down that they've gotten on penalties. Yeah, Kyle Mosley knew what he, he knew what he did. <laughs> <laughs> All you do is shake his head. He knows better. Yep. <laughs> he knows. <laughs> Don't yell at me, coach. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> That moves the ball to the Cedar Grove 48 for the first and 10. Wall with the run. He's got a big hole, and he takes that and more. Stiff arms another defender. Out past the 30 before he's finally knocked out of bounds. And out of bounds, Kenry Wall, 19 yards. Boy, what a, you know, you, you focus, you can't focus on Smalls. You got this guy, another 1,000-yard rusher. 1,000-yard rusher, and watch this run. He starts out one way and turns on a dime. Yeah. It goes back the other direction and has all the pursuit going in that way, and here he comes with a big run in the other direction. Boy, once he turns on the Jets, he is fast, as is this guy. Smalls with a big gain on first down, and look at Savannah Christian come back with a drive of their own. They're moving, and they're using the guys we thought. Like you said, pick your poison, a pair of 1,000-yard running backs, and they're back up to the line. Here they go. Both offenses also moving quickly. Cedar Grove, almost another offside. Blaze Thomas, the sophomore, 15 on the play clock, so he's got time. Changes the play. Turns for Smalls, first down on the short game before he's met there by Beckford and Mosley, but they'll move the chains again for the Raiders. Drive continues. Beckford, one of the guys up front we talked about for Cedar Grove making the stop, but not before Smalls gets the first down yardage and they move the sticks. Good look there at Coach Woodward. Into the red zone, final 30 seconds of the first quarter. Wall stomps on a dime again, but too many black shirts around. Can't get anywhere. And a short gain on what may be the final play of this electric first quarter. Yep. Chase Kearns there in on the stop. This one has gotten off to quite a start. It has. Before you sat down. They may get one more play. And they will not. And that's the way it ends. If you like offense, you love this first 12 minutes. First quarter. And it looks like uh, those will be Plenty more to come after this. It's a Class 3A championship game. Raiders and the Saints marching on into quarter number two. While we've got a quick break in the action, did you know that the same area of just one football field can contain up to 95 termite colonies? That's why you need Breda Pest Management to defend your home. Breda, the official pest control of high school football. Only in Cartersville Bartow, three Smithsonian affiliated museums, Barnsley Resort, and an authentic downtown full of unique restaurants and shops. The perfect destination for a memorable staycation, only in Cartersville Bartow. Half of the nation's opioid overdoses happen right at home because people don't understand the dangers of taking an oxy or perk with a glass of alcohol for stress or to sleep. Learn how to protect your family from opioid overdose at opioidresponse.info. Let me know if I can help you with anything. Just looking. I only buy local and sustainable, so. Oh, well that shirt's not local. You should be wearing cotton. 
Georgia is a major supplier of cotton worldwide, so if you'd like to buy local to support Georgia, buying cotton's a great place to start. It's renewable and sustainable. Naturally. Thanks. Now that's a polyester fiber made of oil, by the way. Where's your dressing room? This is my family. Everyone on my team knows that we're going to fight, we're going to be relentless, we're going to be aggressive, and we're going to be determined to get a great result. Mabra Law. Back to live action here. Larry Smith, Sam Crenshaw, Cody Chaffins down on the sideline for us as we begin the second quarter of this Class 3A championship. Here in downtown Atlanta, day three of competition here on GPB Sports. So glad you're along with us. And we certainly want to take a moment to thank everyone uh, that's a part of this. It is truly uh, a cast of hundreds that really makes is. this happen every single year. Um, and I wish we had the time to name every single person because everyone is, uh, does such a great job to make this one of the best weeks of, of championship events anywhere. Group of dedicated professionals. Yes, sir. Uh, they always look forward to being a part of it with GPB and make that's what makes it special. Yeah. State championship week in Georgia. Yep. We love being here making memories for all of you watching at home, wherever you are. Let's get this going, second quarter. Savannah Christian. And that's Smalls. Make that wall. They tear his jersey off. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. Try to slow him down. Kenry Wall, he just wouldn't go down. Man, nice, nice lane here. We got a handful of jerseys right to hold on to, but he still got away. First and goal from the six. Wall again. And they're going to say he was down. The ball popped out afterwards as he tried to reach out, but he was already down. And Kenry Wall, boy. Number nine, Tony Forney, ends up making a stop that keeps him out of the end zone. We have to get him a new jersey before halftime here. So, <laughs> five yard gain. Raiders gotta, try to tie this up. We got a we got a whistle. A timeout. A timeout. Oh. Yeah, look at the timeout. Coach is out there running on the field trying to get that the one called. They did the not half. like what they saw. First time out of the game for Cedar Grove. How about the speed here, not just the speed, the strength of Wall. Yep. And that's the thing when you watch this guy. Really strong runner. So after a couple of bang bang touchdowns to start this game, we saw Cedar Grove go on a 13 play drive to take the lead 14 7. And when we come back from this timeout, it'll be the ninth play for the Raiders of Savannah Christian as they look to equalize it. Coach Adams wanted to do something to try to challenge what they've been doing and maybe stepping up that defense a little bit there at around the goal line. And let's see what he's seen. What his defense is going to do. This offensive line for Savannah Christian has been moving well. They've been opening up some holes. And they know they have some guys that know how to finish in the backfield. First minute of the second quarter, Class 3A championship. Thomas with Smalls behind him. Wall in motion and may have drawn them off sides again. That's the third off sides penalty against the Cedar Grove defense. Encroachment defense at the distance to the goal line. Still second down. So it moves the ball about eight inches. One more look at it here. Yep, that's our guy. That's <laughs> Mosley up front. Come on, guy. They're doing something with the cadence. They're throwing him off. Smalls touchdown Parks was in the backfield but he was too strong got out of that and the one yard run by Zoe Smalls and we're one point away from making a tie game yet again here's another look at it yeah the first contact right there you said Parks was there Marcus Parks was there got a hand on him but not enough to keep him out of the end zone no Good look at Zoe Smalls, just a junior. Ethan Bird with the point after, and we're tied yet again, 14 all.
Savannah Christian. The coach was talking about, uh, we asked you, what was a pivotal moment for you? And we'll talk about that in just a moment. Let's get down to uh, Cody Chaffins for more. Prefer to run, and that's understandable. Yeah, it's understandable they prefer to run. It starts up front with the Hogs, what Baker Woodward, the head coach, told us. And they've got the left side, they're not the biggest guys, but they are the most experienced. And then the center, same thing. That's a three-year starter in Luke Gunn. That's the guy they ran behind right there to get into the end zone. They do have a freshman starting on their offensive line. I guess at this point in the season, nobody's a freshman is what Coach would say. That's right. So. They were the scoring drive brought to you by the Governor's Red Ribbon Campaign. And there it was, nine plays, 62 yards, took them 315 as well. Talk about this team and their offense, um, it's Savannah Christian. Uh, they can score in their last six games. They've scored 40 points or more five times. 55 points against Beach, 56 points against Gray, uh, Gross, 63 points against Liberty County, 48 points on overtime thriller against Peach County early Peach in the County. playoffs. That was mm -hmm. big. And then 42-21 win over Lumpkin County here last time out in the semifinals. And Pooch kick on the other side now. So we've got some, got their both special teams trying for some tricks right now. We talked about Savannah Christian. Let's take a look at their resume and kind of how we get here. That brought to you by the Georgia Department of Behavioral Health and Developmental Disabilities. Uh, eight time state champion, seven of those in that decade between 75 and 84. Uh, 13 region titles, and you can see here some of the coaches uh, that did that. Donald Chumley and then uh, Coach Atwood before him uh, with five of those state titles. Very proud, proud history in football for Savannah Christian. And trying to add to that here. 14 all. First play from scrimmage, first down after the kick. Great field position for the Saints. And they bottle up. Well, that's not Walker. That's Anthony Booker before Booker getting a game. chance. There's some ball. In on the stop, there was Reed Penrose, 55. For Savannah Christian. Delayed handoff. Off and running. That's Booker again. So Coach Adams going to his bench for a spark. Number two, look at this boy, big block given right there by Jalen Slaughter, 50. Helps spring him. 19 yards. First down again, it's Booker again. Driving his way down close to the 30-yard line. Big first down play for Cedar Grove. And here come the Saints, getting those blocks up front. Colts are looking to throw this time. Got a man deep. Oh, it was right there. Jordan Christie, the freshman. One of the younger players that Coach Adams is really excited about. Just passed his hand. Just, just, just through the hands. Threw it out there just a little too long for him. Yeah. Oh, oh boy. my goodness. Almost six. First time they've tried to go deep on this. Booker back out of the game. By the way, he was three carries, 29 yards on this drive to get him down to this third and three play from the 31. Colson, first down and more. Spins out of a would-be tackle and in for the touchdown. 31 yards to Andrew Leslie on the score. How about this effort? Yeah. Wow. What a throw, catch, and run. Boy, and what a job there to reach out at the end, to know that he was close enough, and to extend that arm before his knee hit the ground to make sure he got the call for the touchdown. 
The fireworks continue here inside the Mercedes-Benz Stadium. <laughs> Previous play is under video review. The rolling on the field was a touchdown. So they confirm it. Like once again, we have instant replay here at the GHSA Championships for the first time. Uh, they're going to confirm it, taking a look at it, I should say. And once again, that's scoring plays. Scoring yeah. plays that it will be reviewed. Yep. And here's another look at it. A look at it. Let's watch his knee as he gets down to the two yard line. Andrew Leslie. I think he was in. Better angle right here. His foot was down, but it's the knee is the question. That's the question right there. Knee is down there. And he's extending the ball. I, he's extending the ball. I, I think the nose of the ball crosses the plane when his knee is down. We'll see if see if I'm right. I'm not, but I'm not the official. We don't want to do that. That's somebody else's job. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I got enough problems of my own. Here we go. Let somebody else do it. The there we go. Stands is called touchdown. Okay, here we go. That's from Jason Jones, our referee for the day's game. Sixth touchdown of the year for Andrew Leslie. And it puts the Saints back on top in this championship game with Alex Brock coming on. For the extra point. And it's true. Brock, just a freshman, by the way. Three for three on extra points. Yep, yep. So Cedar Grove answers the call yet again. <laughs> We've got a barn burner on our hands here in this Class 3A championship game. The kickoff is up next. Football Fridays in Georgia on GPB is brought to you in part by Cigna Healthcare. Cigna Healthcare is a proud partner of Georgia Public Broadcasting and Football Fridays. Cigna Healthcare's mission is to improve the health and vitality of those we serve. Visit Cigna.com to learn how you can support your physical and emotional well-being. DBHDD and the Governor's Red Ribbon Campaign is all about Georgians standing together for substance misuse prevention. Be kind to your mind. Live drug-free. Learn more about healthy alternatives and living a drug-free lifestyle at GARedRibbon.org. This program on GPB is made possible in part by supporters of the Georgia High School Association, including the following. A game without a crowd is just a scrimmage. A performance without an audience is just a rehearsal. Without your presence, high school sports and the performing arts aren't possible. Ensure that these essential extracurricular activities continue to enrich the lives of students in Georgia. Purchase a ticket to your local high school's game or performance. This message presented by the GHSA. Back here live inside Mercedes-Benz Stadium, 21-14 now. Cedar Grove is on top in that scoring drive. Five plays, 60 yards. It took just a minute 10 to do it. And that drive brought to you by the Governor's Red Ribbon Campaign. Good look there at uh, Andrew Leslie, his first reception of the game, and it's for a touchdown. By the way, uh, Elliot Colson, the quarterback, now three of four, passing for 48 yards. And again, the score to Leslie. It's a good look at Young man Brock, we were talking about earlier, that coach really high on, thinks he'll be an All-American by the time he's done. That's high praise. Saw this guy in the scrimmage before the season began. They were at the scrimmage against Stevenson, and he was out there just really working, really working, and they really expect great things from him. Yeah. Kick there in the hands of Wall, and we know how fast he can go. Bottled up there, nice job by the defense. The coverage team for Cedar Grove. So now, so now Savannah Christian comes back on offense and let's see what they're able to do to respond. They've done so, so much in this game. 
So first and 10 right now from the 22 yard line for Savannah Christian who opened scoring. It's two and a half minutes into this game with their touchdown drive off the opening kickoff. So Smalls with the carry quickly across the line before he's met with a host of black shirts and pushed back after a gain of a couple. We'll look at it here. Chase Kern, we've already called his name quite a bit, already a quarterback sack in this game, number 51 for the Saints. Three-yard gain there, second down. Walls. <laughs> and once again, they are grabbing his, anything they can find, they're going to grab and try to hold on to. Joseph Slaughter there, one of the faster guys on this defense. He made the tackle, number 21. Third and eight now. Thomas keeping it himself, and looks like they may get a face mask on this. Flag down. It's probably going to be a face mask, five, 15 yard penalty, and a first down. Uh, Savannah Christian already two first downs by way of penalty in this game, and it looks like this could be the third. And we'll get the official call from Jason James. Personal foul, face mask, defense, 15 yards from the previous spot. Penalty results in a first down. One more look at it here. Right there is where it happened. There's a better angle to take a look. And you can see Javon Beckford reaching out, got a handful of mask, and they're gonna, that's what they're gonna call every time. Beckford so active for Coach Adams. 79 tackles, 10 sacks coming into this game. Already, though, the fourth penalty for Cedar Grove. But again, three of those leading to first downs for the Raiders. Out to the 39 now for first down. And penalty now. Yeah, it's maybe against the offense. Prior to the snap, false start. Offense. Five yard penalty. Down remains first. Both teams a little anxious right now as we <laughs> get a couple minutes into the second quarter. Look at Coach Woodward. Baker Woodward, sixth season with Savannah Christian. 57 wins, 18 losses, and again trying to bring a ninth championship to the school. Last came in 2011. First and 15. That's Busey on the catch. Nice run after to get those yards back. Bring up second down at about eight. Good look at it there. David Busey called his number several times already. As you can see, his stats. One of the top safeties in the country. And again, he's headed to Columbia. Play for Coach Beamer next season. Second down and eight. Big hole for Zoe Smalls. First down and more. Still on the run. Zoe Smalls skips a tackle and out of bounds inside the 20 yard line. Oh my goodness. If it's not Wall, it's Smalls. But they do it all for this Raiders offense. So impressive. 42 yards and one more look at it here. Watch the hole. Huge hole created, and then watch the shift in this here to avoid the tackle. <laughs> Nicely done. Quickly up to the line, first and 10 now. In the red zone. It's Wall. He's tripped up. By LaMarcus Parks. After a short gain. That's Parks coming from the other side and making a big stop. Trying to slow down the Savannah Christian offensive attack. It's rolling. Three yard gain there. Second down, Smalls again, and this time great effort there by Keith Bass, the Mike linebacker, to slow him up before he can get ahead of Steve. That brings up third, about six. Six 
See what play is going to be called here. What the decision is going to be. We got a third down play. Seventh play of the drive here for Savannah Christian. Thomas to throw into the end zone, looking for Busey. Picked off. Oh, what a play! Demarcus Clements, the junior. Coach talked about Sam. He's got soft hands, and he displayed him right there on the interception in the end zone. Demarcus Clements right there with great positioning. Going on the field is an interception. Take another Touchback. look here. First down in position. Kept an eye on it. Tipped it. Pulls it in. He had three interceptions on the season. Boy, one more look. This is just a great effort to hold on to it. They are reviewing. And I think that's going to hold up. And it is. Great play by Demarcus Clements, the junior, to stop that drive. First turnover of the game here in this Class 3A championship. First and 10 from the 20. Walker back in the game, breaks the tackle. Across to the 33 and a first down for the Saints. Got a penalty flag back here, though. They'll come back and see it. Maybe the area of holding, possibly. Well, that was an impressive run by Walker. That was. Some hard running. 13-yard gain if it holds. But we see the players, both teams, walking back to the original line of scrimmage. During the run, holding, offense, 10 yards from the spot of the foul, replay first down. So instead of being out to the 33, it's back at the 10. Let's see if we can spot the penalty. And it looks like right there, 56, Cameron Foley. Foley with a look on his face like, who, me? <laughs> Little has gone wrong for Cedar Grove's offense so far in this game. So first and long and a huge hole for Booker in the game. Right, right, once again, he's got a first down and more. Anthony Booker. If he wasn't in your scouting report, he should have been. One play and he's back out again. 28 oh, yards of the like, pickup. Look at the one. Well, they're look. moving people out of the way right there. Jordan Thornton, number 70. Chase Kearns just opening up big holes. I think you and I could run through those holes. We uh, couldn't, we but I get quite as far. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> but we could fit. We could fit through the hole. That's right. Colson looking up top for Leslie and overthrew him. It brings up second down. They don't take many shots downfield, but when they do, it just it feels it's just electricity waiting to happen. And Colson just floated a little too much air into that one. Yeah. And too much for Leslie to bring in. Andrew Leslie, a junior. See number two there, Devin Carter. Florida State commit. We mentioned all the college coaches. Keep an eye on the Cedar Grove program. Colson calls for it. Walker back in the game. Nice gain on second down. Brings up third and short. 52 Isaiah Redman in on the stop that time. For Savannah Christian just trying to hold on, but it brings up third down here. Eight yard gain and doing it against this uh, front four that includes again Elijah Griffin for Savannah. Christian Colson keeps it short of a first down, but he's past midfield. Griffin, big number 95 there. They like to kind of run away from him. We haven't called his number very much. No, no. Coach Woodward saying, I'm glad that he's on our team because I don't know how we would defend him. In fact, in practice, we don't defend him. We don't block him. That's how dominant he is. Number 95, Griffin for the Raiders. They're calling a timeout. No, we we're going to have something rare here. Official timeout. They, a measurement? Maybe a measurement, I guess. And here we go. Uh, so 
and he is about four inches short. Our referee, Jason Jones and his crew. He's had a busy first half here. Fourth down play here. You're on the other side of the 50 yard line. How much do you trust your offense? John Adams says I trust it a lot. Still on the field, no punt. They will go for it, try to keep this drive alive with 5.42 to go until half time and sitting on a seven point lead, trying to add to that. Colson will go under center. Walker behind him. Twelve on the play clock. Uh, they try <laughs> oh. they tried something and they didn't. Yeah. <laughs> and just the body language from Colson. Yeah. <laughs> Prior to the snap. False start. Offense. Five yard penalty. Uh, Still fourth down. Uh, kind of tricked themselves. They were trying something here. <laughs> Colson's reaction. Right. Reaction just says it all, right? <laughs> so that puts him five yards back, and now they will punt the ball. Jacob Johnson, number 30, is on to kick. Angles it away from the returner, and they'll down at about the 24-yard line, and that's where uh, Savannah Christian will take over. Let's go down to Cody. As Savannah Christian defense gets a big stop there. One of the guys congratulating folks as they come off the field. Keith Brooking, he's the linebackers coach for Savannah Christian. Of course, his son Logan plays on the team. And coach was telling us he's, he's in its third year. Of course, five-time Pro Bowler for the Atlanta Falcons. And coach told us he is as important to the coaching staff as Logan, the Co Clemson committed tight end, is to the team. And coach just raved about how great Keith Brooking has been in his three years as a head coach, as mm. an assistant coach. Mm. Had a chance to say hello to him before the game. Um, covered him a lot during his time with the Falcons. We've been going back to Georgia Tech before the game with Falcon. And a radio show we have on Friday nights. We do a segment called School Days. We get guys to talk about that. We had him on. He kept referring to his home in Sharpsburg as Little Old East Coweta. <laughs> we were just Little Old East Coweta. I said, I said, Brooke, you know, <laughs> you haven't been to Sharpsburg. You can't get off the exit That's after right. 5 o'clock. There's so many people down there now. That's right. But back when he was growing up, it was a small place. Right, right. Played for the great Danny Chronic there at East Coweta. All those warehouses down there, the trucks and all that, oh, the yeah. semi truck. Yeah. It's, oh my goodness. Yeah, yeah. It's busy down there. Not what it used to be. Not, not at all. Not at all. But what? But, but you know what though? What an experience for these young people to get to yeah. learn from him. Because Absolutely. Because I think of somebody who has so much passion for the game, and now he's teaching and passing it on to them. Uh, what a treat. Absolutely. Special. Always special, and things that the players will never forget. A couple of short runs brings up now a third and seven and another encroachment. That's the fourth already on this Cedar Grove defense. Encroachment. Defense. Five yard penalty. Still third down. That's a big play as it moves it from third and seven to third and two. <laughs> sure. And the <laughs> Big uh, nose guard, Kyle Mosley, 54, said, hey, what me this time? What me? <laughs> it was him. <laughs> well, this changes things. Third and two now. Smalls, and he is bottled up, met by Wesley Brown, the Will linebacker, and a host of others. I think that actually Jamari McIvory on the carry. And yeah, brings up fourth down. No gain. The offense is staying on the field for the Raiders. Wow, here we go. Coach Adams wants to talk about it. Yeah. He had Come his out. punt team out. Cedar Grove. Their second time out of the first half. And look at John Adams. Won a state title in his first year as head coach in 2021. 
Former South Carolina athlete. Baseball player. Yeah, he played, played a little baseball. Mm -hmm. He's quite an athlete. And right now, he's probably doing There's a little bit of the resume there. Yep. See the growth. So you see four championships here. Uh, you know, it didn't make the playoffs at all at the bottom there for the entire first decade of this century. Um, and then they took over from there, and it has just been, they have been outstanding. 14th straight year in the playoffs. And again, here we are in the state championship game for the third year in a row. So that brought to you by the Georgia DBHDD. Win by learning about safe usage of prescription opioids. We appreciate their support. Now, one thing I'm sure Coach is warning them about, don't get a false count and jump off sides. It's probably what he's Right. Is, you know? And that's the main thing. They may not run a play here. They, they may just not. They can pull them off. And that's what they're trying to do. Yeah, yeah. Play cock down to eight here. Yeah. <laughs> you hear somebody shout, watch the ball. Timeout. <laughs> Savannah Christian. So that was a timeout. The first timeout of the first half. The first one by Coach Adams for Cedar Grove. Well spent timeout to say, like you said, stay home. Do not bite. <laughs> yep, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Coach, he knows his team's eager. He knows the guys are eager. Right. They're jumping off sides. And right now he wants to try to keep them on, on, on um, and avoid that, and now I guess we'll see Savannah Christian go out and kick. Yeah, see the punt team now. Um, you know, we talked earlier. Coach Adams and Cedar Grove uh, began the season two and five. Um, you know, we said, "Hey, look, you know, uh, you know, three A teams don't want to play us." So we went out and played a uh, four A team uh, from Florida that lost in the semifinals. There, he played Carver Montgomery from Alabama that made the playoffs. He played a uh, four seven A teams, including a couple of teams in the quarterfinals. I mean, look at this. Look at the non-region schedule here. Westlake, Collins Hill, Mill Creek. They went down to Colquitt County. Um, you know, four, seven, eight teams. They're a three, eight team. But he said, you know, it was tough, but it really, you know, they learned from it, and it's gotten them here now in the title game once again. And he learned a lot and evolved a lot, and we'll get into that as we go along. He said the Carver-Montgomery game was one that the light bulb went on. Yeah. Um, so we'll talk about that as we go along here. Put us off. It's a good one inside the 30. And that's Bowden Walker. Headed to the Georgia Bulldogs. In a year, 39 yards on the kick and a five yard return. Let's go down to Cody Chaffetz. Talking about John Adams and kind of the evolution of this season. He'd already won a championship at Cedar Grove, but he felt like something just wasn't right about halfway through the season. He diagnosed it by looking in the mirror and he decided Maybe he was focused too much on coaching, which is kind of hard to believe. <laughs> but he said he needed to focus more on developing the character of these young men, loving on them a little bit. He said that is what made all the difference starting about halfway through the season until now. Yeah, he was really honest about that, you know, and it, it, look, it, it, it takes a man of character to look and say, I'm the issue. Yep. Um, and as someone who's already won a championship, finished second another time, and yet you still have the confidence to say that about yourself. Getting in the hands of Miller. Spins out of a tackle there. Uh, there's no face mask. Looked like his head kind of might have spun around, but no call. Nice gain on first down. One more look at it here. The Damian Gowden really figured this out. Read it right. Just yeah. couldn't hang on. He was in the right place at the right time. Held onto his sleeve. Good no call there. Nice run by Miller, who opened the scoring. First play from scrimmage for Cedar Grove. He went for a 64 yard touchdown run. Colson on the keeper. And he gets nowhere. Big 95 Griffin. There he is. Muscles. There he is. <laughs> you will hear his name a, a lot. Saying hello. Yeah, he's not losing that battle too often. <laughs> and on his knee, too, with leverage. <laughs> yeah, really. So third and four now for the Saints. Empty backfield behind Colson. Central Florida commit, just a junior. Saw earlier head coach Gus Malzahn is here to watch him. 
Colson gets it away, but great job by the defense to put the pressure on him. Make him throw that ball early, and it brings up fourth down for the Saints. Jaden Miles putting on the pressure. And the punt team comes on for Cedar Grove. So after a, a wild first quarter, things have slowed down now. The defense is taking over here late in this first half. Defenses are taking center stage. Always so dangerous. Henry Wall back to receive for Savannah Christian. Johnson waiting a beat for his defense to get down and catch up. A punt away from Wall. That's a smart move. Cedar Grove bounce inside the 20. It'll be first and 10 at the 19 for the Raiders when they take over. 41 yards on the punt by Johnson. So you got 209 to go until halftime. You, you got time here if you want to put some points on the board. Savannah Christian can try to get on the in, in either a field goal or try to get into the end zone here. Tie this game up to going into the locker room. We've seen that they can move it. They were denied last time by that interception by Clements. Thomas looking to throw. Gets in the hands of Busey. Nice move to avoid the tackler. First down and more for Busey. Nice job there. That's the way you started off. 13 yards on the pass play. Nice yards after the catch for a guy who everyone expects to play on the defensive side of the ball once he gets to Columbia, South Carolina. Thomas again. Going to keep it. Short game, second and six. Clock continues to roll, nearing the 90-second mark until halftime. Hannah and John standing by for the halftime show. See what goodies they have for us. Thomas again. And picked off. That's Miller. Good return, still in bounds. What a job there by the defense. Make that Tony Forney number nine. Tony Forney with the, the interception. And I wonder if his arm was hit there, Sam. Let's take a look know. at it. I don't know if his ball was hit. No, I think it just came out of his hands yeah. wrong. Just the way it looked, looked like he may have, someone may have made contact with Thomas, but they didn't. He just lost the grip on the thing. So all of a sudden, instead of Savannah Christian getting a late score, now it's Cedar Grove in position inside the 20 in the red zone, first and 10, with 104 left in the first half. You look at Elliot Colson. Dual threat, although we haven't seen him run much in this. Throw up top for the touchdown. Devin Carter. 18 yards. And this quick strike offense of the Saints strikes again quickly. And it was Carter all the way. Colson never looked to another part of the field. The only guy he looked at and put it perfectly for him to catch it there in the end zone. Yeah, knew he had single coverage over there. It's just like in the backyard, if you've got a big backyard. <laughs> Ah, uh, there's some family members and fans. Mm -hmm. Alex Brock is in for the extra point and gets that to go. So what a turn of events. Scoring drive brought to you by the Governor's Red Ribbon Campaign. One play, 18 yards. Took just five seconds. Devin Carter, again, to Florida State commit. Deep threat, 14th touchdown catch on the season, only a sophomore. What a future he's got ahead of him. 
Let's go down to Cody. Yeah, you talk about the NFL bloodlines on the Savannah Christian side with Keith and Logan Brooking. Well, there's NFL bloodlines there. Devin Carter, the son of Dexter Carter, FSU star, and of course, Super Bowl champ with the 49ers. And thus, the future Seminole. Dad's a Seminole. Yeah, man. I'll be a Seminole. <laughs> Dad was a great one. He was. Coach Bobby Bowden. Remember interviewing Coach Bowden after that 94 game, if you recall, that Florida at Doak Campbell, Florida leading 31 to 3, and Florida State came back and scored four touchdowns. It's back before overtime. Yeah. They finished at a 31 all time. I asked Coach Bowden, I said, what was your thought there? You ever think about going for two? He said, yo, Larry, you know, I thought, let them tie. We're going to tie. We're going to tie. And let them undo the tie. <laughs> Hey, Dad. Coach, I love you. <laughs> I know what he's up to. Dad, Granddad, just tell me a story. <laughs> there he is. Yeah. <laughs> Proud uh, Papa right there. All right, now. <laughs> Kick us away. That's Busey trying to make something happen. Gets it past the 30. Felt that his face mask was grabbed. And didn't get the call. All that time, Joseph Slaughter there in on the stop. He's been pretty active today on the defensive side yes. for Cedar Grove. Let's take another look. Hit that right hand, the face mask, touched it. Don't know if he wrapped a finger around yeah. it, but he did touch it. It wasn't enough to draw a yellow flag. So 53 seconds to go. Savannah Christian now finds themselves in a two touchdown hole. Cedar Grove, by the way, will get the ball to start the third quarter. Smalls up the middle for a good gain on first down. Raiders with two timeouts. Clock is running, and they may be content to sit on this. Let's see. Good look at Logan Brooking there, number two, the tight end. He's only a junior. Nothing Lord. doing. Chase Kearns there to wrap him up. 51 there in a hurry. Oh, wow. Wow. So Smalls bottled up, and that may be the last play of the half. What a first half it has been. Electric plays all the way through, and there it is. Clock winding down to zero. This game started off with a bang. Fast drive at two and a half minutes by Savannah Christian to open the scoring, and then Cedar Road, the very next play, 64-yard run by Miller. And then to close it out, the interception by Tony Forney to set up the Colson to Carter touchdown pass and the 14-point gap here at halftime. We get ready to go to halftime. Tonight's coach's interview brought to you by Johnny's New York Style Pizza, your original neighborhood pizzeria. And with the coach is Cody Chaffins. Yeah, here with John Adams. The offense explosive, then had a couple punts, but then you get defense leading to offense. How big was that right before the half? It's good, man, just to have a blend of offense and defense. And I think we're doing some good stuff on special teams as well, too. You're up two touchdowns coming out. You'll get the ball. What's your message to the team in halftime? Uh, just finish, okay? Uh, we got a whole long half left ahead of us, so we just got to finish. All right, Coach, we appreciate it. Good luck in the second half. Yes, sir. All right, Cody, thanks so much. 24 minutes in the bag. And boy, this has been exciting. How about this play by Leslie to get in the end zone? And another touchdown pass by Elliot Colson. He's got his Saints on top at halftime. And a John up next. Only in Cartersville Bartow. Three Smithsonian affiliated museums, Barnsley Resort, and an authentic downtown full of unique restaurants and shops. The perfect destination for a memorable staycation. Only in Cartersville Bartow. Football Fridays in Georgia on GPB is brought to you in part by DBHDD and the Governor's Red Ribbon Campaign. Be kind to your mind. Live drug free. DBHDD and the Governor's Red Ribbon Campaign is all about Georgians standing together for substance misuse prevention. Be kind to your mind. 
Live drug-free. Learn more about healthy alternatives and living a drug-free lifestyle at garedribbon.org. Kennesaw State University. Riding down the road and you're doing just fine When a car in front of you crosses over the line They're in your space, not looking at your face Distracted drivers all over the place Say, We will, we will buckle up Sing it Say, we will, we will buckle up The 34 participating Georgia Electric Membership Cooperatives congratulate all of the winners on the Georgia High School Association Cooperative Spirit Sportsmanship Award for 2023 and 2024. This award honors schools that exhibit exemplary sportsmanship during competitive events. The participating Georgia Electric Membership Cooperatives congratulate all of the winners for this season's award. Welcome to the Football Fridays in Georgia Halftime Show presented by Regions. Get back in the game with Regions Bank. That's John Nelson. I'm Hannah Gooden. We're live from Mercedes-Benz Stadium for the third and final day of the 2023 GHSA Girls and Boys Championships. We are currently at the half of the AAA Boys game between Savannah Christian and Cedar Grove. Let's get you caught up on what has happened so far, John. Cedar Grove has taken advantage of two Savannah Christian interceptions, one in the end zone to stop a drive and one in the middle of the field to stop a drive. They took that second one, flipped it into more, seven more points, and that is why the margin is two scores as we head into halftime here for Quad A. It's the first time these two teams have ever played, John. Really interesting. I mean, you, you get Cedar Grove, who likes to play non-region games out of state and out of class. Remember, the first game against an opponent in triple a for cedar grove was region play wow they played this is their i mean they showed the the graphic late second quarter 7a you're playing cockwood county mill creek collins hill you play westlake dutchtown carver montgomery and monarch out of coconut grove florida on a five-day return you're two and five going into region play then you finally start to play teams in triple a you've run the table ever since and you, you mentioned john adams by the way 32 and 11 in his career you take out that two and five start to the season his career record is 30 wow and six wow take that out non-region he's 30 and six at cedar grove very impressive well these two teams combined have eight players committed to d1 schools next season but what what about the players that are overlooked when it comes to recruiting, John? Yeah. Let's give them some exposure on Make, Make That, that Kid an offer. offer. This week, we start with Stockbridge senior defensive lineman Cameron Reese. The three-year starter ended his junior season with 19 tackles for loss, 15 sacks, and made the All-State team for his region. He's also been awarded the Defensive Lineman of the Year for the Tigers the last two seasons. He currently has an offer to Western Kentucky, but he hopes to get more. Next up is Howard offensive tackle Javon Dunn. The six foot four, 360 pound senior is a leader on the Huskies efficient and dynamic offense. So someone make him an offer. And one more Howard player to highlight is senior linebacker and running back Ethan Ellington. He shines on both sides of the ball. On offense, he's explosive in the red zone with seven carries for 28 yards and two touchdowns. On defense, he's notched almost a career total of 140 tackles and five and a half sacks. Hopefully some of these players get offers rolling in and we will be taking you through it all on early national signing day. We have a special Wednesday, December 20th at 8 o'clock p.m. streaming live on all of our platforms, including our website, gbb.org slash sports. John, that one will be with you and Matt. That's going to be really exciting. And it's the beginning of the trickle down effect. Early signing day, the portal going on until January 4th. 
all of these absences and vacancies and everything working its way downstream to actual signing day in February. Stage one happens a week from today. We have to take a quick break, but coming up next, it's our You Save It Pharmacy Georgia player spotlight, and then we'll have more after that as well. Stick with us on GBB. Football Fridays in Georgia on GPB is brought to you in part by Georgia's EMCs. So much more than electricity. In lively towns and peaceful rural areas, Georgia's electric membership cooperatives are on a mission to provide a different kind of electricity. Our not-for-profit member-owned EMCs are focused on making life better for members. At private residences, farms, and thriving businesses, we work for you. Generating safe, reliable, affordable electricity, giving back to local programs, serving our members to make life brighter. Georgia's EMCs, so much more than electricity. The GHSA football playoffs and championships are brought to you by Alpha Insurance. We're more than just an insurance company. We're a part of your community. What you doing? Hey, just finishing this claim to get Dave back on the road. Nice. I wonder what Dave's doing. You do your thing. We've got you covered. Football Fridays in Georgia on GPB is brought to you in part by DBHDD. Win by learning about safe usage of prescription opioids. Welcome back. It's time for the Georgia Player Spotlight brought to you by You Save It Pharmacy. And today we are highlighting a fellow AAA football player. That's Dowdy senior running back Cameron Davis. He will be taking his talents to Florida State next season. Here's his story. Hi, I'm Tommy Sharp with You Save It Pharmacy, and I'm proud to present to you this week's You Save It Pharmacy Student Athlete of the Week. I don't think he realized how good he really is. I do everything that I can to be myself. I mean, I think he is the type of person where he cares a lot about his teammates. Well, I do a lot in the classroom to make sure that I'm keeping my grades maintained. And the type of person that he is, I mean, he checked all the boxes. Hey, this is Cam Davis, class 2024, door to high school. I hope you've enjoyed watching You Save It's Pharmacy Student Athlete of the Week. If you'd like to watch our full interview, please follow this link. I know Seminole Country is excited to add him to the roster. Congratulations, Cameron Davis, on all of your success. And thank you, You Save It Pharmacy, for another great spotlight. We have to take one more quick break, but next we have a special guest that's going to break down what's happened so far and some video replay grading on the GHSA. That next on GPB. Football Fridays in Georgia on GPB is brought to you in part by Regions Bank. Get back in the game with Regions Bank. At Regions Bank, we're here to listen to your needs and we'll customize a plan to help you reach your financial goals. Our service to Georgia goes beyond banking to creating more inclusive prosperity in our communities. From education to financial wellness to economic development, we're working to level the playing field so more people can succeed and our communities can thrive. While we've got a quick break in the action, did you know that the same area of just one football field can contain up to 95 termite colonies? That's why you need Breda Pest Management to defend your home. Breda, the official pest control of high school football. State University. Half of the nation's opioid overdoses happen right at home because people don't understand the dangers of taking an oxy or perk with a glass of alcohol for stress or to sleep. Learn how to protect your family from opioid overdose at opioidresponse.info. Oh, could you uh, give me a give me a soda there?
Sweetheart, please don't forget to wear your seatbelt. I got it, Mom. It's a really nice day living in the right space. Breathing your face got me feeling so kind of way. In the blink of an eye, so many tomorrows can disappear. Buckle up for your future. Every trip, every time. A message from the Governor's Office of Highway Safety. Welcome back to the Regions Halftime Show. That's John Nelson. I'm Hannah Gooden. We're at the half of the AAA matchup between Savannah Christian and Cedar Grove. Saints are up 28 to 14. We have a special guest here with us. Our flag football and video re re replay guru is what we're calling him, Dave the Reynolds. The review guru. <laughs> Absolutely thank guru. Thank you. Thank you, John. It's the, the hoodoo gurus guru. and the review gurus, <laughs> and Dave's got them both. Dave, we have wrapped up all three flag football games. You and Wiley called them all. Take us through some of the highlights of what happened and how much fun are See, those I, girls I know how he's watch. already processing in his brain. How I know much time do we have about. to talk about flag football? Uh, you know, the past three days, phenomenal. Uh, two of the games were a one-score game coming down the last minute. Uh, then we saw, you know, Southeast Bullock 62-0. and 0, So a fantastic ending to the 2023 flag football season here in Georgia High School. For those who have not been following along, I just want to give some quick final scores. Southeast Bullock beat North Oconee 14 to nothing to get their third championship in a row. Then Greenbrier beat Lithia Springs 14 to six to get their first win ever. And then this morning, Pope edged out Alatoona 14-13 to win their school's first championship. So it's been unbelievable. Yeah, again, defense wins championships, yep. and especially in flag football, right? Those extra points, even more critical. So yeah. came down to the last play. Hope nobody went anywhere where uh, well, watching those three ball games mm -hmm. double post corner dude nelly is the oc on the <laughs> sideline beautiful calling Nobody the game better winning play before it happened <laughs> they're writing it down in front of me i can't ignore the evidence for something like that but it's it's great to see the sport continue to grow we're looking for it to grow in the pockets in southeast and southwest mm -hmm. georgia as we go forward all right video review sir yes absolutely it, it's been it's been an interesting implementation here at Mercedes-Benz in year one. We we asked you about it yesterday, so we're asking you about it again today that with, with your He was your a B-minus yesterday. B-minus yesterday on the GHSA. So he goes from being a B-minus to a... <laughs> yeah, we're going B-plus so okay. far. Yay. Some internal things. We still have to work through. We saw some things yesterday uh, that we need to fix going forward, and we will. No big deal. It's new for everybody. Uh, so B-plus so far, but again, hey, a lot of football today to be playing with from, uh, from the three teams. All right, so for those, once again, let's, let's go through what can and can't be reviewed because I know that there are probably some folks that are sitting there going, well, they should review this and this and this and this. What they what can they look at upstairs? What can they not look at upstairs? Yeah, so things like uh, pass interference, right, those uh, 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 holding, those kind of things, not going to touch that with the replay of the review process. Uh, things like spots, uh, did they achieve the line to gain for a first down? Did they achieve uh, the goal line being another big play there? So there's some things they can, can not. Uh, the coach has the red flag. We've seen that a couple times this week already. Uh, there are some things that, uh, get, again, giving the coach the opportunity to also uh, challenge some things. Again, the, the purpose here is that the coaches don't have to worry about the challenges. Uh, the officials on the field don't have to worry about the challenges. Everything is done upstairs. We've done some training. Started in January. Went through the summertime. Had a little test run week one on, on TV uh, as well. So uh, we're, we're getting there. So not only are you the GPB guru on all of this, you mm -hmm. represent the GHSA and you are a part of the broadcast, the football broadcast, as a analyst to come in and, and break down He's third what, man in. He's what's very going busy. on during these reviews. So, so what's your process like? Uh, it's a lot. It's a lot of process. Again, uh, where else would you rather be this week yeah, than right here? Exactly. Again, a master of none, Jack, a lot of <laughs> trades right there. So uh, happy, happy to be here, no doubt. All right. 
You, you see, you see him wearing the tie. You, you see, you see. This is this is Park View Orange. Championship you, Orange, you, yes, sir. Park View Orange. You have your your he, Seminoles he, colors well, on today too, John. The Atlanta United colors there, okay. Missy. All right. So <laughs> there's a reason he's all he's all lined up here. Uh -huh. He's going to be busy after this game is over. So he's in his his referee presentation oh, outfit today. That's right. He's going to be wearing yeah. he's going to be wearing a cap and some stripes downstairs for the next game. What are you looking forward to with this crew? Yeah, I uh, just don't want replay to get involved at all. <laughs> <laughs> I want to do a really good job on the field and the people upstairs. What? Uh, we have no issues. So again, uh, I, you know, I started my background on the field as an official. So uh, this this avenue has taken me with some, prof <laughs> some <laughs> professionals like y'all. Wait, what? Uh, what? Professional. Look what? that word up later, okay? Yeah, I will. John doesn't know what that means. Pro <laughs> fashion. Okay, I think yeah. I spelled it right. Yeah, we'll, we'll Google that after we get yes. off air here. All right, we are going to take a look at some final scores yes. from today, from the week. Sit tight, Dave. We'll look at some finals. Oh, from Monday, from yeah. the very first day. All that's what we're going to do. We're going right. to take you all the way through to everything through. that's happened on Georgia's EMC scoreboard. Georgia's EMC is so much more than electricity. Southeast Bullock, one of six teams in flag football in the state of Georgia, ranked top 20 nationally, 62 and 0. They are number four in the country in the Max Preps poll. They knocked off North Oconee, Prince Avenue Christian. They win over Swainsboro in the rematch from last year in D1. D2, one point game that David mentioned earlier, Red Devils and Blue Devils. Bowden wins it 28 to 27. Tuesday, it was four on the floor. Greenbrier got the win over Lithia Springs, first time ever in Augusta area school. Gets the title in flag. Rock Martin, Pierce County, somebody just scored again. They run three overtimes, 93 points on the board. Perry gets their first ever state title in 70 years. Thomas County Central, their first in 27 years. Now, today, once again, we had our final with Pope and Alatoona, the one point game. Savannah Christian, Cedar Grove, Coffee Creekside, Milton Walton after this one. Dave is busy, he's gotta go and so do we. Yes, John. Eight teams have been crowned. Three more to go. Wait, Let's get go. Eight. back to the AAA game that we are in right now. Thanks for watching the Regions Halftime Show. For everybody here at GPB, we will see you on the tailgate party after the game. Oh, we made it. What you doing? Hey, just finishing this claim to get Dave back on the road. Nice. I wonder what Dave's doing. You do your thing. We've got you covered. Well, back here again, ready for the second half uh, here in the uh, Class 3A championship game. It is Cedar Grove on top, 28 to 14 over Savannah Christian, Larry Smith, and Sam Crenshaw. Boy, that was uh, electric. A little bit of everything there. Some exciting plays, but also some good defense there in that second quarter. Great defense in the second quarter as well. The defenses showed up too, but the offense has really set the tone, as you want to say, set the heat in the room, the temperature <laughs> in the room. <laughs> and they did that right away in this game. That's right. So the Raiders coming out now and taking a look uh, and seeing what they're about, and uh, as well as the uh, Cedar Grove Saints. Let's take a look at these uh, first half highlights, if we will, brought to you by Breda Pest Management, official pest control of high school football. Uh, starting off early on, that was uh, uh, Savannah Christian with the first score and then first play from scrimmage after that in the game How about the young man Miller gone 64 yards and that was all in the first three minutes of the game and we're up here panting right just trying to catch our breath because <laughs> these guys are moving so fast for this field unbelievable 7-7 seven, seven score and then Cedar Grove with the giant hole at the middle Bowden Walker with the score made it 14-7 one more look at that Guy, verbal commit to University of Georgia. Start of the second quarter then. Small's getting it in. Great second effort for Savannah Christian. We're tied at 14. 
And then Everett Colson, watch the effort here by Andrew Lesson. Spins out of the tackle, and the effort at the goal line, they reviewed it, and yes, he did get the ball over after an interception by Tony Forty and a long return. We want to look at the Leslie play. 21-7, and after the interception by Forney, next play up top to Devin Carter. And so Elliot Colson, nice job with two touchdowns right there. Let's go now to uh, Cody Chapins with Coach Woodward. Yeah, here with Coach Woodward. Coach, we saw the offense get going on the ground game. Smalls and Walls are going. How do you evaluate what they've done in the first half? Yeah, we had a good half moving the ball. It's kind of my fault. We shouldn't have thrown a pass there at the end, got an interception. Um, we should have another score on the board. But, you know, very proud of our offensive line. We are able to move the ball. We knew it was going to be tough. Um, but hopefully the second half we're waiting on a – Cedar Grove to make a mistake. You know, I don't know if y'all can help that along, but uh, we're waiting on them to make a mistake, and, and, and we're going to play a second half. I, I feel like we're going to play a really good second half. Um, but proud of our guys so far, but I know we can play better. What was the message to the team at the half? You know, th throughout the playoffs, we've had great first halves. And we haven't had the, the, the best second halves. And so, you know, uh, maybe we reversed it. You know, we didn't have the best first half this time, and hopefully we're going to have a great second half. All right, Coach, good luck. Thank right, you. Thanks so much. We'll send it back upstairs to Sam and Larry. All right, Cody, thanks. Yeah, we'll, tell, we'll talk to Santa about that, so we've got in the bag for the second half for him. By the way, that Coach's interview brought to you by Johnny's New York Style Pizza, your original neighborhood pizzeria. Let's get now to those first half stats brought to you by Breda Pest Management and the official pest control of high school football. And uh, Sam, it's, you know, those numbers fairly even, uh, but again, Cedar Grove just taking advantage of that big play and the uh, interception there late in the half. Absolutely. From the top, we said both of these teams like to move it on the ground, and you see that's represented by the numbers. I'm sure Savannah Christian would like to have a little bit more in the passing game and try to balance out that attack, but that's who they are. That's what they do. You see those two turnovers, and that's big figuring into the score we have right now. And that was huge because the first one was a fumble. They were driving for a score. I'm sorry, the interception, I take that back. The two interceptions, the turnover that was in the end zone, that they were going for a touchdown yes. there. That takes that away. And then the second one as well. Both those uh, negated drives um, that turned into points on the other end. First downs even. Yeah. And Savannah Chris next with more plays. Yeah, look at the plays, exactly. Elliot Colson, again, two first half touchdown passes. Look at him, look at the cheerleaders from Savannah Christian making the drive over. Now for a four hour drive. Brought a nice crowd up though. Downtown Atlanta, yeah, very well represented here. For a Wednesday afternoon at one o'clock. Yeah, not the usual game that you not play. Not the usual in. thing. We talk about <laughs> this time of day, this time of week. And, you know, football players and football coaches are creatures of habit. And this is definitely not the usual habit for these teams, but still they're coming out. They know what's on They know what's on the line. They know it's a state championship game. It's the 15th game of the year. And you're here on the biggest stage in our state. You know what I mean? And that's, what, and that's why they come and bring the effort. That's right. Let's check in with Cody one more time before the kickoff. Yeah, you talked about the fans traveling. How about this team traveling? They were number two seed, so they've been on the road for everything except for the first round. That included trips from Savannah to Dahlonega, oh. Savannah to Morgan County, Carver, Columbus. They have spent, over these last five weeks, 24 total hours on buses. Can you imagine <laughs> an entire day in the last month spent on a bus? Oh. And, wow. yet, and yet they made it through. Yep, yep, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Cody, yes. that's great stuff. <laughs> Going to see a team in the next game that had to log a lot of miles in coffee. That's right. They went all the way up to Cartersville last week. My and goodness. My goodness. Second half kickoff now brought to you by Buckle Up Georgia. Seatbelts save lives. And again, it was Savannah Christian that uh, opted to receive the ball to start the game. And so Cedar Grove with the two touchdown lead. And we'll get their shot on offense first here in the second half. Let me see Mr. Walker back there waiting. What are the chances you think he's going to get to touch this ball? <laughs> I think they're very slim. Absolutely. <laughs> they kick away from that. Ball goes out of bounds, barely crossed the 40. To keep it away from him, you know, as well as Malachi Miller. You know, he had a 99-yard kickoff return last week. The guy with the 64-yard touchdown run to opening scoring for the Saints in this game. So he knows how to run fast out in space. And once again, when you do that, you're going to give up some good field position to start this first possession of the second half for Cedar Grove. Free kickoff out of bounds. Kicking team. 
Five yards added to the end of the kick. First down. So the ball goes out at the 38, but because of the penalty, it's out to the 43, and that's a short field uh, for an offense. And it's been very potent here in the first 24 minutes to see if they can add to it. Championship culture for Cedar Grove. Third straight year in the championship game, trying to win their second title. Walker brought down David Busey there. How many times have we called his number? And they say this guy's going to play on the defensive side of the ball at South Carolina, and he shows you he can do it. Quickly back into the secondary, making that That's tackle right. for loss. Good look at Busey, as we saw earlier, rated by one service as the 24th best safety in the country in the class of 2024, headed to Columbia. One yard loss, second down. Col Colson, pump fake, brings it down. Gets it out right to midfield. Eight yard gain. And that's just a veteran, right? That's just a guy who's been here a time or two before. And that's all you're seeing right here. He's going to take what you give me. You're going to give me this? OK, I'll take it. And even recognized uh, his spy, Jaden Miles, number one, was right there spying on him, runs away from him, and still gets some positive yards. Walker, right side, first down, bust through, past the 30, he can go. Touchdown, Bowden Walker. Wow. 50 yards on the score. Folks, is UGA ready for a running back named Walker? <laughs> uh, look at this. And he, he knows how to finish. You will not catch him. How about the speed? Once he breaks through and gets past the second wave, right yep. here, yep. He, he turns on some jets. Wow. Impressive run. The Saints wasting no time in getting back on the board here. 50 seconds in. Alex Brock with the extra point. One more time. Finds his hold, makes the cut right there. And just outruns everybody. Jamari McIvory, it appeared, was step for step with him right there, but even he couldn't catch up. Take a look at that scoring drive. Brought to you by the Governor's Red Ribbon campaign. Three plays, 57 yards. It took less than a minute for Bowden Walker to find the end zone. You know, 72, 28th touchdown. He had 27 touchdowns coming in. Coach said also he's got jokes. So he's the light of the, of the locker room. <laughs> yeah. How about that? Yeah, so. I'm sure his teammates love it. Yeah. It's John Adams talking about the adjustments he made during the season. Seven straight wins to get here. An eighth gives him a championship. Three touchdown lead suddenly. This was a 14 all game in the second quarter, early second quarter. It's been all Cedar Grove since then. Savannah Christian coach Baker Woodward talked about uh, maybe we can turn around and have a good second half after so many good first halves this season. That's not the way he wanted things to start. Short kick taken there by McIvory. Gets a good return out close to the 40, and so good field position now as Savannah Christian. And Baker Woodward trying to make something happen and get some of these scores. I mean, they've well, they've, they've got to get some scoring here. We talked about how they've hit 40 points routinely here in the last six weeks. And they're going to have to do that here if they're, they want to win. By the way, 25, 25 yards on the return there by McIver. Curious to see how this offense responds here. The first possession of the second half. They're down another score. First and ten. We got a flag down here. Smalls on the carry, but we'll see what the flag is about. The 
If you're Savannah Christian, you have a lot of time left. You don't have to get it all in one throw or one play. Keep chipping away and count on your defense to make some stops. Illegal formation. Five players in the backfield. Offense. Five yard penalty. Still first down. So first and 15 now for the Raiders, the Road Raiders, as Cody talked about. All the, put a lot of mileage on those school buses <laughs> in the last month. They have. They have. <laughs> Truly, but, what a journey. <laughs> but right now, they're trying to get that offense in gear, going in the right direction. Well said. Handoff. That ball. Going to Jaden Miles. His first carry of the game. At four yards back, second and 11 now for Savannah Christian. Miles again. Boy, not much that time. Keith Bass, 24. You know that stop. They're just dark jerseys all around. There's 24. It's got him then. 51 comes in to help out mm -hmm. Chase Kearns. Pick up of two brings up third and long now for the Raiders. Got to get to midfield. Wall in motion. Thomas looking downfield, and it's a great play defensively. Right there for the Cedar Grove defense, Sawan Smith. And you see Thomas rolling out and tries to lay it out there, but boy, Smith just comes up and bats it away. And he wanted he, he wanted that one. <laughs> it's a great defensive play. That's not enough. He wanted the pick. Yeah. Thomas trying to get the ball in the hands of his speedster, Zoe Smalls. One of 2,000 yard rushers in this backfield for Savannah Christian. Wall is the other, but instead it's Christian Johns on to punt again. Low kick, almost a line drive. Great job there defensively to bottle up Miller. 31 yards on the punt, and as you can see there, but a little, re little return. It was actually Bolden Walker on the. On the, re on the reception for the return. So now if you're Savannah Christian, you really got your defense has got to come out and do something good for you. You come out and try to get Cedar Grove off the field, three and out, try to see if you can get a turnover. That would be big for, yeah. for the Raiders right now. Something that change the field, change the momentum, to change the, you know, get a little juju back. Got to do it, got to work yeah. for it. Yep. Cedar Grove in control right now, up three scores and trying to add to it. Early third quarter, Class 3A championship game. Colson decides to call his own number, gets a few yards before he's tripped up. David Busey, number nine. In on that stop. Called his number quite a bit. One of several players on this Savannah Christian team. Looked at for colleges. We mentioned Logan. Brooking earlier just a junior. He's already committed to Clemson. Plays both ways. Tied in and also plays on defense. Walker carrying defenders with him before finally he's brought down by Isaiah Redmond, but not before a good gain. Brings up third and short for the Saints. Watch 52 in white. Comes up, sheds the block, and is there for the stop. A little hold there by Chase Kearns, number 51, that he got away with for Cedar Grove. Third and three. Pass into the hands of Miller. First down and more. Still on his feet. And we got some flags going on. We got some people yeah. who were blocking out of bounds, and maybe a little after the whistle. 24-yard pickup, but well, let's see what 
what the call is. It's actually Caden Hambrick, number six. With that pass reception. And we're seeing the Saints walking in the opposite direction here. Mm -hmm. Question is, what is the call and where did it happen? The flag is right at midfield. <laughs> a lot of talking here, a lot of communication <laughs> going on. <laughs> <laughs> Class 3A game right now. Class 5A championship coming up at roughly 4 o'clock this afternoon and followed by the 7A game at 7 o'clock tonight. That is the schedule. The that flag was clearly after the catch, after the run. They move the flag now back to the 40. See if we can see what happened. Third and three play. Colson into the hands of Hambrick. I have two fouls on the play. Holding on the offense. Ten yards from the spot of the foul. Replay third down. After the play was over, personal foul. Defense. I mean offense. After this is to the goal. Third down. Wow. What sequence was that? Wow. So a 24 yard gain is negated. Instead of being into Savannah Christian territory, the ball is marched all the way back to the 15 yard line. So that brings up third and 21 now for the Saints. Man, look at this. This is definitely not what Coach John Adams wants to see happen with his team here. Mm -mm. Can Savannah Christian take advantage? Make this big stop on third down, get the ball back, and again, possibly flip the field, give their offense another opportunity. Colson. Looking deep. Got a man open. He's got him. First down. That's Andrew Leslie. Already has a touchdown, and the longest pass play of the game for a first down for the Saints. 46 yards as they get all those yards back and then some into Raiders territory. Give the credit to the offensive line. Look at the time that Colson has. He just hangs it out there perfectly. It's a good ball. Very quickly now going deep yet again. And he overthrows his man trying to get it to Leslie. Six two junior Andrew Leslie. <laughs> Look at Colson. He know he he had him. <laughs> Colson throws a nice ball for he a does. guy who doesn't throw often. When he does, it's a pretty spiral. And I'm sure Coach Malzahn is enjoying seeing that in person here he today, is. right? He is. That's right. With him a commit to Central Florida, Central Florida head coach here watching the game today. What a program they've built down there over the past 10, 15 years. Now in the Big 12, mm -hmm. major TV market. Anthony Booker back in the game. Boy, he has had some big moments in his rare carries. He's been a nice change of pace back for them today. He has. He really has. When you want to mix it up, change a little something, sure, Walker is the guy you're going to get most of. But also to give Anthony Booker some, some opportunities. Mm -hmm. And he's done what you're supposed to do. Coach got the confidence to give you some touches in the state championship game. You better deliver. Did you? Going to count on you in the future. Only a sophomore, 5'10, 173 pounds, Anthony Booker. Colson going deep again. He's got one on one, and he made the catch. Yes! Devin Carter with the foot inbounds. And that play got off to an odd start. The guys looked like, they, looked like there was some movement yep. before the snap, but, but no Look penalty flags. What a catch. Great angle here. Look at this. 
This Got camera the work. Great job, guys. 29 yards on the pickup. Wow. And Booker, touchdown. While we're admiring the replays, they just go in from seven yards out. And the Saints widen the gap. Not even midway through the third quarter. Booker simply would not be denied. No. At the contact here, those legs are still going. Still going. Still going. Just ran over some guys. Brock with the extra point. Booker before that carry. Five carries, 60 yards, so add seven more to that. His first touchdown of the game. And the Saints in control right now here in the third quarter. Play is stopped on the field. We take a break as well. This Class 3A championship game it was a close one a year ago for Cedar Grove. It's not close in this one. We've got more to come. Football Fridays in Georgia on GPB is brought to you in part by Cigna Healthcare. Cigna Healthcare is a proud partner of Georgia Public Broadcasting and Football Fridays. Cigna Healthcare's mission is to improve the health and vitality of those we serve. Visit Cigna.com to learn how you can support your physical and emotional well-being. Football Fridays in Georgia on GPB is brought to you in part by Georgia's EMCs. So much more than electricity. Today's conservation-minded consumer cares about where their energy comes from. Your local EMC cares too. Georgia's electric membership cooperatives offer renewable options for our members. In fact, our solar portfolio will produce enough clean energy to power more than 180,000 households striving to move the needle toward progress and position communities for the future. Georgia's EMCs, so much more than electricity. Football Fridays in Georgia on GPB is brought to you in part by DBHDD and the Governor's Red Ribbon Campaign. Be kind to your mind. Live drug free. DBHDD and the Governor's Red Ribbon Campaign is all about Georgians standing together for substance misuse prevention. Be kind to your mind. Live drug free. Learn more about healthy alternatives and living a drug free lifestyle at garedribbon.org. Back here inside Mercedes Benz Stadium, Larry Smith, Sam Crenshaw, Cody Chapin's on the sideline with us 42 14. And Sam, Coach Adams talking about, um, you know, he's got that, that guy in his corner that he's had really throughout his entire career playing and coaching. There he is right there. Uh, my goodness, the Southwest DeKalb legend. Uh, when the, in the cab there, Coach Buck Godfrey uh, here at the game. He knows something about winning state championship. The Southwest DeKalb team won the state championship in 1995, and uh, John Adams is a graduate of Southwest DeKalb, and he gives so much credit to this man, even this year, after every game. He says they've been texting and communication. When he talks about Coach Godfrey, he gets pretty emotional. He says he, he taught me integrity. He taught me character. He taught me how to pray and be this kind of leader of young people, and uh, Coach comes out today to show support for his prize pupil. And he's got to like what he's seeing here. And uh, boy, prize pupil indeed. Uh, John Adams has this team now with a very sizable lead as he has sights on a second state championship in three years. And the runner up finished last year. Yep. And they're almost almost a, a yard away from a third title last year. And congratulations to coach who was inducted into the Georgia Sports Hall of Fame wow. this summer. Oh, that's awesome. One of the legends. And what a blessing to have a legend on, in your corner, right? How about that? How about that? Short kickoff in the hands of Zoe Smalls, and he's got some blockers, 50 and more. Still on his feet down the sideline. Zoe Smalls, and maybe that's the spark that Savannah Christian needs right here as we get into the middle part of this third quarter. They need some scores, and they need them now. 57 yards on the return for Zoe Smalls. Sam, this is why they don't kick to him. <laughs> <laughs> and he got it. And look who's out in front of him, helping yeah. him right there. Yeah. Wall. McIvory's got some wheels, too. Down to the 21. 
Let's Can see the if Raiders take advantage. Let's see if it energizes this team. Miles wrapped up quickly. Oh my. Kyle Mosley right out front. Big guy had nine tackles for loss, six sacks this season. Here he is. Commit to UAB. Got a black belt in Taekwondo. <laughs> you gotta get away from this guy. <laughs> Three yard loss on the play. It was Wall going in motion before he was called back. Play clock is down to 10. Blaze Thomas, the sophomore. Got to find the end zone here. Well, he has had trouble getting that play call. He had a burner timeout. Yeah. Timeout. Savannah Christian. Their first timeout of the second half. Savannah Christian finding themselves down here by four touchdowns and we talked about first ever meeting between these two schools Cedar Grove and Savannah Christian we talked about again trying to get here over recent years lost last year to eventual champion Sandy Creek in the quarterfinals um, in the mix each time but they lost you know to some some big names when oh, you absolutely. look all through in terms of uh, uh, twice to Wesleyan in the quarterfinals lost to uh, Elka as well, some teams that we have seen in this championship game, and they have uh, run into those teams along the way. Let's go down to Cody. Star-studded affair on the sidelines here. Coaches from all different schools, and we just had the coach from the big school here in the state of Georgia show up. Kirby Smart is here recruiting a little bit. Of course, Bowden Walker, the running back from Cedar Grove, committed there. Only a junior, although Kirby probably could have used him at some point this year. And then, of course, he's trying to sway Elijah Griffin, the big defensive lineman from Savannah Christian. So Kirby Smart in the house. Yeah, he's got a lot of competition. 37 offers being given already to Elijah Griffin, with I'm sure more to come as he is just a junior, and he's on everyone's list across the nation, and deservedly so. Good to see Coach Smart in the house. Second down, nice spin move by Miles. Across the 10 and in for the touchdown. Just what the doctor ordered for the Raiders. Nicely done by Jaden Miles on the 24-yard touchdown run to get their first score of this half for Savannah Christian. Can we talk about number one? We talked about him on defense from the outset, and he's been showing up on defense, but he shows that if he gets the opportunity to touch the ball, he can finish too. Taking the contact, staying on his feet, getting into the end zone, just what this team needed. Good score there for the Raiders. Ethan Bird puts it through. 42-21. Let's take a look at that touchdown. Nice move. Takes the hit, spins, and gets in for the score. You know, that's give credit to this Cedar Grove defense. They have not uh, allowed those kinds of holes. Uh, it's it's been it's been pretty tough the past quarter and a half uh, for the the running backs so of Savannah Christian to find some seams in which to get past the first wave and to work into the secondary, but they did so there. Nice job by the offensive line for Savannah Christian to open that gap and then Miles taking advantage. Absolutely. I guess it's what they needed. Still got a lot of time left in this game here. And we have just under six minutes to play here in the third. See a little more energy. And that Savannah Christian sideline, they really needed that. A little more pep, yep. They've only been held to 21 points or less twice all season long. So you feel like there's there's some more oh, still yeah. to come yeah, for these Raiders. There. Yeah, there's you got a lot there. of time on the clock. So, but you got to ha have some stops. Caden Cheatham on to kick. It's a squib kick. That was touched. That ball is loose. Uh oh. And they think they've got it. You don't suppose. And they do. Busey Whoa. comes up with it. What a time for that. Plays like that are all about timing and timing it right. Yep. One more look at it here. Watch it goes off the hands right there. So Lamarcus Parks and a great, great job by Busey to go in, hit 
the Cedar Grove player trying to recover to knock him out of the way and then makes the recovery. That's a smart veteran move. Coach Beamer will smile it. That's right. <laughs> That's my guy. So Savannah Christian back on offense again, trying to cut into this deficit. Miles again, another spin move. Great move, close to a first down. Let's see where they mark it. Finally brought down by Mosley. And suddenly a little bit of life now for the team in white. Kyle Mosley going to hang on, but after a great run there by Miles. Nine yards in a play. Wall stopped. Running right into the Mosley again. Yeah. He is just active on every play. Was not fooled at all by this one. Nope. Caden Hambrick also there to help out. We see you 5 4. <laughs> Lost a two in the play. Now third and three. Under five minutes, third quarter, Class 3A championship. Smalls. Bottled up after a gain of one. That'll bring up a fourth down, and they'll go for it here. You have to. Yeah. Savannah Christian try to keep this momentum going. They just score the onside kick. They recover. Trying to capitalize. As Sam said earlier, trying to make something happen. No turnovers yet. They haven't forced any mistakes in the Cedar Grove offense. Trying to make something happen here. Fourth and one. Play clock down to eight. Thomas has got to hurry. Play wow. clock's at one. Wow, and they're forced to burn out. a second timeout. Man. Timeout. Savannah Christian. Their That's one of the things that's got to be frustrating because you, this is the 15th game. And if anything is getting your plays in and getting everybody lined up and ready to go, it's something you ought to be able to do in your sleep right now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, of course, it's the state championship game. But that shouldn't change. And so that's got to be troubling. That would be troubling for Coach Woodward yeah. to not be able to get that play started. Yeah, something happened that they weren't comfortable with it. But, you know, then again, if, if you don't get this play right, if a lot of time left, I'm not saying it's over, but your chances of your chances of coming back diminish if you can't convert this fourth and one right. You'd like to have that time up in your uh, back yep. pocket. Yep, yep. That's the thing. You had to make a choice here. Yep. We talked about Logan Brooking, and there's Keith Brooking. Yeah. His career you followed quite a bit. Great to see him. Before the game and Coach Brook. Like he can still play. Oh yeah, man. He's in great shape. He's in great shape. <laughs> yeah. Yep. That's him. And that's Logan. Again, committed to Clemson already. Different ACC school than Dad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but not too far from home over there in Savannah. And boy, Smalls is stopped in the backfield on fourth down. And so a change of possession. Boy, a lot of guys over there in on that play. Mm -hmm. uh, for Cedar Grove, one of the number 11, Wesley Brown. We talked about him. Committed to the Naval Academy. So Chase Kearns, he has had a busy, busy afternoon. He has. So tough blow to Savannah Christian. Not only do you burn your second time out, but you fail to convert and turn the ball over. And now you're putting the ball back in the hands of this Cedar Grove offense. Yeah. And has been very effective throughout this afternoon. Walker back in the game. He goes nowhere. A player with his helmet off have to come out of the game. Big play by the big fella. He knows coach is in the house. That's right. He's going out and make a big stop. <laughs> Number 25 from Cedar Grove must come out for one play for his helmet coming off. Yeah, Deshaun Hendricks. Clock on my whistle. Yep. Nice stop helmet there by off. Griffin. Yep. No gain on the play. Elliot Colson, the quarterback, taking his time. 
he takes it himself. It's hit in the backfield by Redmond, but spins forward for for a couple of yards. And we talked about Elijah Griffin, 95, made that stop a moment ago, Sam. So we take a look at the replay here. Consensus five star, and again, the number one rated defensive lineman in the country, and rivals rating him the number one overall junior prospect in the country. Man. Georgia's offered South Carolina, 35 others. He's only a junior. Play clock running down here. Colson. Everyone's covered, trying to get his way up for the first down, but a great job by the defense. But we've got a flag down in the backfield. In the spot of what may be a hold. But do you take the flag or take the yards? Because you stopped him on fourth down anyway. Yep. Be fourth and five coming up. Griffin making another stop there. Holding. Offense. Penalties refused. Fourth down. Nice stop here by the Raiders defense. That'll bring on the punt team. Jacob Johnson, the senior, his third punt of the day. And that's Wall back to receive for Savannah Christian. Look at the yardage now. More than 400 yards for Cedar Grove. Johnson gets it away. Wall gets women, lets it bounce. And it'll stop right there. About the 22 is where they will down it. Nice job there by Keith Bass to make that play. 32 yards on the punt. And Savannah Christian, nice job of their defense. But again, the offense has got to take advantage here. Have to do it. They have to do it. Last possession, you know, stopped. They were moving the ball well. Got turned back on fourth down. A little bit later now, 2.31 to play here in the third. And the clock definitely becoming a factor here. Not, it's not enough just to get scores. You've got to get scores quickly and get the ball back. They did that before, but couldn't capitalize on the onside kick. Blaze Thomas hands off to Smalls. Has a hole. Gets a gain there to bring up second down. The clock so, winds out the two minute mark, Sam. So Smalls running on that left side. 73, Jarrell Howell Jr. Helping out. Raiders got to get moving. Man in motion, hand off to Smalls, but he's met in the backfield. And Chase Kearns again. He's been a busy man this afternoon. <laughs> he has, baby. There he is, yep. I'll be here all day. Watch 51. Oh, my goodness. Mm. TFL. Coach Adams called that front four his four horsemen. He said they play so well in all facets of his defense. Third and seven now. That small's in motion. Thomas. Oh, incomplete. Try to get the ball to Busey. Couldn't come up with it. Great idea. It's great to see Thomas step up into the pocket and moving. Just threw it behind his receiver. Another he, look. Probably gonna look downfield more, don't you think? Down three scores. Yep. Just threw a little bit behind him. So fourth and seven, 111 to go in the third quarter. Punt team comes out. John's to punt. And he is, every punt has been away from the receiver. That one actually right at him. It's a fair catch. On for by Walker. 
37 yards on that kick. And the Cedar Grove defense holds. And so they will get the ball back with 104 to go in the third. We mentioned Cedar Grove starting the season two and five, and Coach Adams called this. He said, really, he said, you know, it's a character building season. You know, they, they really said it's just a lot of character. Again, the slow start. Really kind of just took some things from there to build on. Said it means a lot to him to represent DeKalb County. You know, they are the team out of DeKalb right now. Third straight trip here. Great success in the past decade. First down and the handoff doesn't go very far. Now we got a flag here. And that's, yeah. The that Savannah made, Christian sideline yep. explodes. I got it. That was Booker on the carry. Now the play had been waved dead, so you wonder if it's. Let's see, let's see what the call is here. He's pushing it. That's Guyton, 18. After the play was over, personal foul, defense, 15 yards from the end of the run, first down. Yeah, the play had been whistled dead, and they kept playing on through to get him down to the ground. A little frustration there by the Raiders. Yeah, I'm sure the coaching staff are all saying, boy, we having a hard enough time slowing this crew down. Right. We don't need to give them any help. Yeah, that's right. We stopped him. We stopped him. <laughs> Walker in motion. Colson on the throw. Gets it out to the freshman Christie. And look out. Jordan Christie with the speed. He's out of bounds at the one yard line. They've tried to get the ball in his hands before, Sam. 44 yards here. Something else for Coach Smart to like about Bowden Walker that he blocks. Yes. <laughs> How about that, right? Jordan Christie, a freshman, ran a 10-7 in the 100. Ruin on the field as the runner stepped out at the one-yard line. The previous play is under video review. And they may reverse this. We'll take a look. But Jordan Christie, the freshman, ran a 10-7 in the 100 in middle school, went to the national track meet out in Oregon. Yep. 12 catches coming in, 171 yards. And this could be his second touchdown of the season. We'll see what the call is. We talked about Coach Adams having been a baseball player in college. We didn't see how far he threw that red flag. With. Yeah. <laughs> he threw it all the way out to the number. And, and, and uh, the players went out to retrieve it for him. <laughs> but he, he, he could wind it up and throw it pretty good. That looked like a touchdown there. Did the ball cross the plane? He kicks the pylon with his left foot. Yeah, sir. Is there enough to overturn it? And that's a hard call to make by the ref that's right there at the, yeah. at the goal line. And for people who don't know how video review works here, the championship games, while we look at it and you look at it at home, here in the stadium, we have a play under uh, official review plastered on the halo board. People are not getting a chance to see it. And that's yeah. the thing that, you know, one of the, the stipulations when they decided to have it was that while they're deciding it, while the officials are looking at the play, the play will not be seen by, by, by the crowd. Yeah. And I think that's fair. That way, the, because we're all human, you're not influenced by the crowd's reaction. No. To that. But you know how people can still see it? If they're at gpb.org. Sure. Yeah. If well, you're on gpb.org, you, 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 you can still see what's going on, right? I'm, I'm seeing them down there in, right. the, in, the, in the crowd. We're, we're, we're looking down <laughs> here, right? right? All these people That's are right. on their phones, on their <laughs> smartphones, you know? And we're happy that you're doing that. Whichever way you're accessing us, yeah. or whatever device you're using to watch <laughs> us wherever you are, we're happy that you're joining us here on GPB. <laughs> There's somebody who waved. For state championship. Hey, That's how right. you doing? How are you? Yep. <laughs> We're up here. <laughs> yeah, man. We're talking about you. Yeah, you're. That's right. 
Two more championship games still to come after this one. Class 5A and the Class 7A matchup later on tonight. Finishes out our week of coverage here on GPB. And what a week it has been. Mm -hmm. Being uh, back in this uh, state-of-the-art facility uh, that has hosted so many incredible events in the short time, in the short time of existence. Here's another look. That foot kick kicks the pylon, and here's our decision. The verdict is in. Maybe. <laughs> After review, the runner's foot hit the pylon with the ball, ball across the goal line. Touchdown. There it is. How confident was Cedar Grove? The kicker is already on the field. <laughs> Number 40. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Alex Brock. So Jordan Christie, the freshman, can say I scored a touchdown in the championship game on the 45-yard pass play from Elliot Colson. Brock with the extra point and good. And a scoring drive brought to you by the Governor's Office of Highway Safety. Brought to you by the Governor's Red Ribbon Campaign, I should say. Two plays, 62 yards, 19 seconds. And like you said, the great block by the star junior running back, uh, Bolden Walker to open up the space for yes. Christie to do his thing down the sideline. Absolutely, absolutely. Like the bubble screen out there, throw it out in the flat, and he goes out there and gets a block and springs uh, Christie free to go down the sideline and score. Yep. Well-designed play. We saw him go in motion on that second down play. 49-21, Cedar Grove. Champions in 2021. Runner up last year. Trying to win their fifth state championship overall. 2016, 2018, 2019, and 2021. And, and they're really holding up the banner of DeKalb County. There was a time when the road to the state championship in high school football led through DeKalb County. I mean, you can go back years uh, when you had programs like, like Redan. Uh, back in the, the, the era of, of, of Kevin Butler and Chris Gardaki on down to the Southwest DeKalb programs. And in recent years, Tucker uh, was there. Um, this is the team that's holding up the banner for the county right now. Tucker just a decade ago, and my first game on GPB and the Georgia Dome, Tucker losing to Creekside. Creekside, and today is December 13th. It is 10 years to the day that Creekside beat Tucker in yeah. the Georgia Dome. Yeah, yeah. Exactly 10 years. Yeah. And they are the next game up after us. Uh, Creekside will be here taking on coffee. That is coming up next, folks. Stay tuned. Um, so it's been, been a pretty special week talking with Coach Maurice Dixon out of Creekside. A lot of the players from that team have been back to visit this week and uh, the last couple of weeks. And so they're excited to be in the Dome, and they are coming up next. Special game, 10-year anniversary, trying to make it happen again. Their only state title 10 years ago, trying to make it happen. First and 10, Thomas slant, good to Busey for the first down into Saints territory. Busey's still working. Yeah. He's still out there battling. He's been impressive today. He has, both sides of the ball. Thomas. That's Mr. Complete. Brooking. Out to Brooking. Big kid, 6'6", 235, only a junior. Got some nice wheels, too. Logan Brooking. Can they get a playoff before the end of the quarter? Yes, they can. Smalls on the run. It's been tough sledding for him here in this game against this defense of Cedar Grove. Three quarters in the books, and the Saints holding up four fingers. 12 minutes to go. Can they hold off the Raiders and march toward another state title? Well, the answers when we come back. 
The GHSA football playoffs and championships are brought to you by Alpha Insurance. We're more than just an insurance company. We're a part of your community. What you doing? Hey, just finishing this claim to get Dave back on the road. Nice. I wonder what Dave's doing. We've got you covered. What? Come on, Ray! Oh, come on! Oh, what a bad call! No, no. You have no business being out there. Terrible. You know, I'm a person too. Half of the nation's opioid overdoses happen right at home because people don't understand the dangers of taking an Oxy or Perk with a glass of alcohol for stress or to sleep. Learn how to protect your family from opioid overdose at opioidresponse.info. Over here. Right back here to start the fourth quarter, Class 3A championship game. A good look at the Cedar Grove cheerleaders who've had a lot to cheer about in this one. Yes, 49 they have. 21, Saints on top of Savannah Christian. Let's go down to Cody Chavins. We talked to John Adams this week, and he talked about he loves the culture they've created at Cedar Grove because so many of his former players come back, whether it's Kristen Miller who plays at Georgia, Ricky Lee at UAB, but he also has a former coach who has come back. That's Jimmy Smith, who was the head coach at Cedar Grove when they won their first state title back in 2016. That was at the Georgia Dome. Then again, they won one here in 2018. He was still the head coach. Then he headed off to the college ranks. He is currently the running backs coach at Arkansas. So he's here doing a little recruiting, but I'm sure checking up on John Adams, who was on his staff back in the day. Yeah. Coach Smith also coached track at mm. Cedar Grove, and mm. they won, I think, a couple of state track championships. Um, big impact on the football program. We've seen some track guys on this squad already. <laughs> we saw it in Christie just a moment ago. Thomas trying to make something happen. Does. Gets it to Brooking. Fighting for yards. He's tough to bring down. Look at the time of possession. Cedar Grove has had the ball only 15 minutes. According to that graphic right there. Logan Brooking fighting for yards. Gets it out of bounds. Third and nine now. Boy, nowhere to go for Thomas. Guess who? <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> he has been there all afternoon. Chase Kearns, mm. 51. Making that stop, getting some help from Beckford there. I'm not, not sure the coaches knew his name beforehand, but there's some coaches here. <laughs> He's saying, I want to call, can I call you after the game and have a conversation? <laughs> what are you doing next weekend? get you on campus this weekend fourth and 14 they've got to go for it line to gains a 26 for Thomas throws it deep great catch by Brooking for the first down all right now Ha <laughs> Logan Brooking the junior listed by on three is a ninth rated tight end in the country 27 yards. Great catch. Remember when that kid was born? <laughs> Dad was playing for the foul. You age yourself, that's right. <laughs> Goes Wall. More positive yards, gets out of bounds. I'll tell you what, that. Jet sweep. He just he's already got a full head of steam, you know? Yeah. When Tommy gets the ball. Very effective. Uh oh, got a whistle. Their first time out of the second half. Cedar Grove wants to talk about it. 
10 38 to go trying to maintain this four touchdown lead Savannah Christian we talked about how they've gotten stopped before getting to Atlanta so many times over the years as you look at what they've done in the last several weeks they finally broke through and boy Sam how about that offense every step of the way absolutely absolutely and the game Peach County was big because you know the reputation you know the history of Peach County and coach Woodward talked about how big it was to get that win not just a playoff win but to beat a program like that and did it in overtime by the way just a real he said you know one of those where just a real gut check and he knew then he said we this might be the year we finally could run through the gauntlet that has stopped us every single year in November and they did that capped off with a 51 26 win over Carver Columbus uh, last time out of the semifinals to make it here uh, finally get to Atlanta and again trying to add to uh, as we said at the at the top of our broadcast uh, just a very proud football history eight state championships it's what they've won over the years trying to come up and get their ninth. Wall. Stop short. And injured player on the Yeah, he's still down. Yeah. Just took a tough hit. He's not very big, but right there, boy. Keith Bass hit him. He is still down. That's tough. Hate to see that. We'll take a timeout while he is uh, on the ground. Back with more. Fourth quarter here in the Class 3A championship game. Football Fridays in Georgia on GPB is brought to you in part by Cigna Healthcare. Cigna Healthcare is a proud partner of Georgia Public Broadcasting and Football Fridays. Cigna Healthcare's mission is to improve the health and vitality of those we serve. Visit Cigna.com to learn how you can support your physical and emotional well-being. Football Fridays in Georgia on GPB is brought to you in part by DBHDD. Win by learning about safe usage of prescription opioids. Half of the nation's opioid overdoses happen right at home because people don't understand the dangers of taking an Oxy or Perk with a glass of alcohol for stress or to sleep. Learn how to protect your family from opioid overdose at opioidresponse.info. Football Fridays in Georgia on GPB is brought to you in part by Regions Bank. Get back in the game with Regions Bank. Right back here in downtown Atlanta. They've uh, uh, got uh, Kenry Wall is uh, got up and is off the field and we hope that he's OK. As we see the Raiders getting uh, back out after huddling up during that injury timeout and try to keep this drive going third and one right now from the six. So Smalls behind him. That's Miles with the carry. And he's close to the first down. Jaden Miles. A little bit of a spark here on offense here in the second half. He has been. He mostly defensive side in the first half. But in the second half, they've called his number a few times. He comes out. And we're happy to see number 11, Wall, back in the game. That's a Good sign for that young man and this program. Yep, he's right back out there. Wall on the right side, that's Miles in motion. He takes the handoff and gets it up close to, still on his feet. Can't quite get into the end zone on the first and goal run. Coach Woodward trying a different twist, trying to get in this end zone. Quickly back up to the line. Oh, 
11th play of this drive. Smalls in for the touchdown. Zoe Smalls, one of two 1,000 yard rushers on this team, puts the Raiders in the end zone. And it's been difficult. The second half has been a real challenge for this team offensively, but here they are getting the work done. Shout out to that offensive line. Mm -hmm. They cleared the way. And Smalls into the end zone for the score. It's a nice space there to get him in. Both teams constantly making adjustments throughout this game. Bird is on to attempt his fourth extra point. Gets it through the outstretched hands of the Cedar Grove defense, and it's now a 49-28 game with 9-10 to go here in the ball game. And I'm sure another onside kick is coming. The last touchdown they scored, they tried the onside kick, and it was successful. But they couldn't capitalize. Couldn't capitalize. Curious to see now is Cedar Grove who they put up front. You know, you bring your hands <laughs> team now because you they've done it to you once. Uh, you want to be on the lookout for it this time. <laughs> Give a shout out. We, are we allowed to do shout outs? Yeah. Okay, can we do that? Yeah. I'm going to give a shout out to somebody who texted me and let me know that they are watching today all the way up in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Gerald Riggs. Hey. Uh, Falcons yeah. all time leading rusher. Yeah. G is up in Chattanooga and said he's watching. He, 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 what really caught his eye was that tearaway jersey he saw. Okay, hey, sure. him back in the day. Sure. <laughs> so, so, so Gerald's watching, man. Hope you enjoyed it up there, G. Gerald's my man. Yeah, he did text me. Uh, you know, I mean, what's, what's, what's up? Uh, Gerald? <laughs> Larry, so you're not hitting him up, what's man? What's up, man? No, I'm, I'm, no. Good, good man. He's a good man. And uh, now here's the thing. He just, he, he came on, he wished me happy birthday last month. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, we're, we're okay. We're good. <laughs> Gerald, we're good, man. We're okay. <laughs> but that's the thing about this. He said, you know, he lives up in Chattanooga. Yeah. And. You know, because of the internet and streaming, I mean, we are everywhere. We are so everywhere. We're it's, everywhere. It's great to hear that. He knows his championship week here in Atlanta. He's checking it out. A little different this time. Up high and smart play just gets down from there. He said he got the <laughs> all hands guys. 40 who caught the inner, it picked off the interception, the second of the half at the end of the second quarter, and the long return led to the score. They made it a 28 14 lead at halftime. Uh, again, coach talking about soft hands up there, and he made it happen. Yep. Well played. Well played. Well, it was. And credit Savannah Christian for trying a different version mm -hmm. of the onside kick to try to make something happen. Tobin Elliott Colson and his numbers there 176 yards, three touchdown passes. That's something. To three different guys. Leslie. Carter and then Christie. Christie. Earlier this half, the freshman. Gets it to Carter. Florida State commit. Finds his footing and gets some positive yards before uh, LaDamian Guyton uh, with the stop there. We haven't talked about him very much, but he's somebody else. Only a freshman. 6'3, 210. He's got five offers already, including Georgia. He does. To look at Devin Carter there, I mentioned. Florida State commit, only a sophomore. His dad played for the Seminoles. Nice play there by Guyton, another uh, young player here for the Raiders with an incredibly bright future. This program, what they're doing on there in Savannah, so impressive. So for Carter, five-yard pickup, second down. To, to Walker, who stops in the backfield. Nicely done there by Redmond. Called his name quite a bit. He's been active. Yep, 52 and White. Watch, gets there quick. And hangs on. Nice solo stop. Loss of one, so third and six now. Taking their time. Play clock winds down to 10. Just trying to burn some clock. Hand off to Walker. He's got a first down, and he's got a burst of speed. Finally dragged out of bounds by Reed Penrose, but not before he gets it into Raiders territory. 19-yard gain for Walker. Just another impressive run by this young man. Steps out to the left side. Penrose has to chase him down, but not after a big run. It gets a first down. He's impressive. He is. 
And just deceptive. He just, he's got that second gear. As you can see here, four-star athlete, according to ESPN. 17th running back in the nation, and only a junior. His future head coach in the house watching him. Booker back in the game, positive yards on first down, gets a couple. Booker's had an impressive game as well. It's a change of pace running back for Cedar Grove. Yep. We talked about the young players here for Savannah Christian, that Griffin's a junior, Brookings a junior, Guyton's a freshman. Same thing to be said for Cedar Grove. Elliot Colson, the quarterback's a junior. Walker's a junior. Devin Carter, a sophomore. Andrew Leslie caught a touchdown pass. He's a junior. Christie's a freshman. You may see these same two teams back here this time next year. Booker with some moves. And he gets a first down. Still going. Anthony Booker, by the way, is also a sophomore. A sophomore, <laughs> yep, yep. 20 yards on that one to add to what he already has. So Booker off the bench, limited carries, eight carries, 89 yards and a touchdown. He's nearing 100 yards here in this championship game. And he has impressed you. You're going to remember his name for next mm -hmm. season. Helmet popping off. That's a concern. We've seen a lot of that here this weekend. The helmet's coming off. It's Got one last week was yesterday was what five five times his helmet came off in the game. Yeah, <laughs> they have a problem with that. Yeah, yeah. They get those tighten those chin straps or something. Bowden Walker came in 1,450 yards, 27 touchdowns on the ground. Just coach talked about just great speed and power. You see the power already. Obviously he's built so well, but boy, just that speed. Really impressed earlier in that touchdown run. He just hit that second wave and found out just a higher gear. Folks, they are waiting at every single snap to get down about the five second mark on the play clock. They're in no hurry. Walker again. Look at that. They're not tackling him, trying to strip the ball away, and he just carries three defenders to another first down. Those legs are just still going, man. Legs are still going, keeping those feet moving. Getting those yards after contact. Watch zero. Pass play. Out to Deshaun Hendricks. Check that. Quintavious Price. He's getting his first catch of the afternoon. Price, a 6'2 freshman. 15, eighth and Hutzpeth in on the stop for the Raiders. Got second down here. Under five to go, play clock at 12. E.J. Colson had the Saints team in control throughout. Hand off to Walker. Out of bounds. Got about the five. So the Saints threatening to score again. The Walker basically just ran out of real estate there. He did. <laughs> Look at Coach Adams. Not to watch his Saints in their 10th play of this drive. Booker back in the game. Next to Colson. Looking to throw, knocked away. Great play defensively by Miles. Boy, he climbed the ladder to get up there. He did. And get a hand on that ball. And kind of getting a little chippy on the field. You hear some fans looking for somebody to look, look at that. Look at that boy. Unsportsmanlike yeah. conduct. Nice play. Yeah. Elevated. Nice elevation. Yeah. Kind of some words exchanged on the field. You can hear our 
crowd mic picking up some calls. Yes, people. The referees. Voicing their displeasure. Yes. Fourth and goal now. And they're going to go for it. Colson stops short. Great job by the Savannah Christian defense. And the ball will turn over on downs. We'll take a timeout right now. 4.30 to go. The Saints closing in on a state championship at the Class 3A level. We're back with more after this. Cigna Healthcare is a proud partner of Georgia Public Broadcasting and Football Fridays. Cigna Healthcare's mission is to improve the health and vitality of those we serve. Visit Cigna.com to learn how you can support your physical and emotional well-being. Football Fridays in Georgia on GPB is brought to you in part by DBHDD and the Governor's Red Ribbon Campaign. Be kind to your mind. Live drug-free. DBHDD and the Governor's Red Ribbon Campaign is all about Georgians standing together for substance misuse prevention. Be kind to your mind. Live drug-free. Learn more about healthy alternatives and living a drug-free lifestyle at garedribbon.org. At Regions Bank, we're here to listen to your needs and we'll customize a plan to help you reach your financial goals. Our service to Georgia goes beyond banking to creating more inclusive prosperity in our communities. From education to financial wellness to economic development, we're working to level the playing field so more people can succeed and our communities can thrive. While we've got a quick break in the action, did you know that the same area of just one football field can contain up to 95 termite colonies? That's why you need Breda Pest Management to defend your home. Breda, the official pest control of high school football. Come over here. 48, make that 49, 28, Cedar Grove in control. This one's go down to Cody Chaffins for more. And some of them are here. Kristen, current Georgia Bulldog. And then also next to him, Jaden Hazelwood, who has probably the most exciting play maybe in Cedar Grove history. It was back in 2018. They were playing Peach County here in the bins in the state title game. It was just 10 seconds left. They were third in goal from the 22. Hazelwood caught a touchdown pass to give them a state title. So great moment there. It doesn't look nearly as close this afternoon. No, no, it doesn't. This has been just an impressive game for Coach Adams and that to, to come a long way. It's been a long year since last year's championship game and the, uh, the heartbreak, the controversial touchdown in the final moments of that one that cost him a state championship. And by the way, they came back this year and beat Sandy Creek, which they're in the same region, 31 to 7. What are their wins along the way here? So from the one yard line is where the Raiders set up after the nice defensive stop there on fourth down. You know, Larry, you and I were on the call for that game, and that, and that play went viral all over the place. Uh, people were talking about it. But the thing I remember, other than that, that was a missed call, was just how Coach Adams carried himself afterwards. You know, I, I think most of us, if we were in that situation, they'd probably have to pick us up and carry us out. Uh, but he was not that. Yeah. And I can't say enough about the, the class and the character that he showed. Uh, it's something he knew was wrong, yeah. and he knew his team and his players were hurt, and he knew all the Cedar Grove folks were all, were all very upset and disappointed uh, that play and how it uh, uh, shaped the outcome of the game. But just the way he carried himself, I think, uh, spoke volumes. And you and I talked then, and we've talked, you and I, several times since then. Yeah. We may not have handled it as well as, as he did. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, Because you know, we're sitting there like, hey, well, what else can we say? Yeah. Yeah. You know, what, was, what else could we say? Yeah. The way he handled it then and the way he talks about it now is, uh, you know, nothing but character in class. Uh, no question. That was tough because he wanted it for his kids. And that's a big thing. So but they have come back strong here and come back from a two and five start this season. Seven straight wins to get here. And uh, now trying to close this out. This is the Raiders young sophomore quarterback. He'll be back again to all the young players. Blaze Thomas takes a tough hit there. And he'll be okay. It's a loss. Yeah, 
This has been a challenging afternoon for him. It has. Been tough all day. But he'll learn from it again. This is a very young Raiders team. What a season they have had. 12 and 2, 6 and 1 in Region 3. Played only five home games all year. They were on the road or in neutral sites all year long. Including this one. Tom is trying to find something. He just took it and just gave it like a it's like a two-hand chest pass. He's in basketball. Yeah, right? yeah. I didn't see a receiver there, but no. uh, he was outside the tackle box, so okay. Stops the clock. 244. Third and 11 coming. Baker Woodward. Savannah head coach. Sixth season there at the program, 57 and 18. And first ever meeting between these two schools we talked about before, and I, I wouldn't be stunned if they don't meet again down the line. These are two outstanding programs with a lot of young talent. Trying to get Busey. Oh, almost Whoa. had the one-handed catch. What an effort. I mean, this kid just does everything on both sides of the ball for Savannah Christian. And he's putting it all out there this afternoon. I mean, he is pouring his heart out on this field today. Good looking player. So fourth and long deep and they'll bring out. Johns to punt. 237 on the clock. Class 5A championship is up next. Creekside versus Coffee. The play didn't get off. It took too much time. Now they'll call a timeout. Timeout. Savannah Christian. It's yes. the third and final timeout of the half. So out of timeouts now. 237 to go. <laughs> You know, we talked earlier, you were pointing out when we saw Buck Godfrey, the former areas, Southwest DeKalb coach, head coach, the legends. Uh, John Adams played for him. They said they text after every game. What do you think this text conversation will be like today? Wow. <laughs> I, I don't, you know what I mean? And, and coach came out to say, hey, coach, give there us a is. wave. There he is. <laughs> the Hall of Famer, all time winning as coach in DeKalb County history and mentor. To, uh, to John Adams, uh, you know, uh, he's got to be just proud, just so, so proud of him. And I'm sure that that will come through that he is um, the one state championship and he's able to be here and, and, and watch him accomplish this great feat. And look, look at that smile. That get, smile. Make, sure, make sure you get the glasses off. I, I don't it's, need this. See a smile for the camera. Well, the, you know, <laughs> he, this is the halo board. Back in the day when he won the state championship, they went through the Georgia Dome. They didn't have one of these at right. the Georgia Dome. <laughs> 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 That's right. So they actually brought the offense back on the field. They try something here. Miles gets it. No punt. No. Nope. Pass play that uh, only gained about three yards, and so they'll turn it over here on the 14. And things are getting a little territory. chippy down the sideline yeah. here. Yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Coaches are coming over to get players out. Yeah, it's been a, it's been an afternoon, a trying afternoon, and everybody comes here to win. Yeah, you know? nobody comes here to go away shorthanded. You want to come here? You played. Uh, you start in January. As I said yesterday, you start with the mat drills, the early morning conditioning, the sacrificing that you get that, that you do. You go through your spring of football and your month of month of May and then your summers so you'll be going to your, your, your different seven on seven so you, your lineman camps you come down your padded camps that lead you up to August and those sweaty days with flies and gnats flying around you you have to get ready and you, you really and it's getting you yeah. ready for your goal is this yeah your goal is to get here yeah new quarterback in the game now that's Javari Ramsey 6'3 210 pound senior
Coming up next, Coffee versus Creekside. Again, if you're joining us right now, this game going a little bit long, so that kickoff will be delayed just a bit. Not as long as yesterday. Not as long as yesterday. No three overtime games. <laughs> so uh, Savannah Christian just called their third and final timeout, so they can't stop the clock. So Ramsey takes a knee. Cedar Grove again we talked about they started off two and five won seven straight games after that by the way uh, they've only played seven other games against class 3A competition the three games in region and these four games Sam in the playoffs yep because they were playing a higher classification teams you know all the way up until they got into region play so uh, you know and you do that to get tested but you also do it because that's who will play you yeah. Nine and five and closing in and going ten and five for a championship for John Adams and he's, his Saints. He's taking the headset off. Clock winding down. 90 seconds to go. Hats off to Savannah Christian. What a season. What a program they've got over in Savannah. But today belongs to the Saints. <laughs> oh, they got coach. They got him. <laughs> Third down play now. Ramsey to take a knee again. And he does. He'll have to still take another knee. Let's take one more look at that. Uh, Guess who else got water all over? Whoa, <laughs> hey. Uh, camera got all wet there. <laughs> Get our camera guy a towel. That's right. <laughs> so one more kneel down. And Savannah Christian actually will have one more play after this. Got a 14 second differential between the play clock and the game clock. And they take the knee. Fourth and 28, and so they will turn the ball over on downs there at the 38. So Savannah Christian, which is already lined up for the handshake line. Cedar Grove players on the field, and there's the coaches trying to get them back off the field. And still have 13 seconds to go. This game began with Savannah Christian scoring two and a half minutes in. Took the ball right down the field, 59 yards in the opening drive. 7 0 lead. And on the very next play, Cedar Grove scored a 64 yard touchdown run, <laughs> 7 7. And they've been difficult to stop the rest of the way. These Saints from Cedar Grove High School, as Sam mentioned, the proud of, De proud of DeKalb County. Thank you. They got to line up and run at least one more here. Yep. You got enough guys seconds. on the field. And looks like they're going to take a knee, and they do. What a season for Savannah Christian. As it seconds wind down, it's a day that belongs to the Saints. Second time in three years, fifth time ever. Cedar Grove, state champion. Coaches greeting each other. Sam, Saints will march back to DeKalb County as champions once again. Once again, as you watch them there, they're going to line as a proud program. They have established a, a tradition, they've established a culture. There's an expectation in that community, and really there's an expectation around the state. They know each and every Friday night they're going to get everybody's best, and they know that. 
They knew when they played the 6A and 7A schools, they weren't going to get anybody's less. Still, they're Cedar Grove, right? You get off the bus, you're going to get our best. You go to Mill Creek, you come up the right place, you go to Collins Hill, you know, you get off the bus, you're going to get our best. Uh, and still, you know, here they are as champions once again. Simply remarkable. And you, like you said, just the preparation of this, you know, so many times you see a champion that will, you know, we'll see him go you know, 12 wins, 13 wins. They're 10 and 5. But part of those five losses was gaining the experience and the knowledge and the character in this year, as Coach Adams talked about, to get to that championship level. He said again, starting 2 and 5. But again, like you said, Collins Hill, Mill Creek, Colquitt County. Uh, they go down and play the 4A semifinalists from, from, Florida. from Florida. They go play Carver Montgomery and lose 13 7. That was the a defining moment for this season when they fell to two and five and wondered what they had. They did a character check. They did a coach's check. Head coach did a check of himself. Yes. Um, and so we had a coming to Jesus meeting. Yep. And since then they have not lost again. Eight straight wins. And now the 2023 champions in class 3A. Yep. A team that has just evolved uh, along with a coach who evolved as well uh, during the course of this season. And that's what's impressive is that they're here in this game every year. Um, one play away from this being a three peat in all three years right of coach Adams tenure um, and yet they have so many players coming back. You know, it's one of those you talk about as you watch you know man that kid hadn't graduated yet you know and <laughs> the bulk of this team is coming back and yes. the same same for Savannah Christian. You know you see look at, at Colson. That's the quarterback. We say Nick talking to him as a veteran, obviously a veteran quarterback. Yeah. But another year to go. But it sure put on a nice display today. And Coach Gus Malzahn among the uh, Division I college coaches in the room. He's committed to Central Florida. Had a chance to see him perform today. Decisive win here by Cedar Grove. Next game coming up. They're already on the sidelines warming up. Coffee versus Creekside, the Class 5A championship. The stage is set. So first, we see the Raiders from Savannah Christian on the stage to get their second place trophy. Look how big Elijah Griffin is, number 95. He's just a big boy. Boy, look at that. <laughs> That's something. My goodness. <laughs> Something else. That's a grocery bill. Tell you what. That's <laughs> tremendous respect for this team, this Savannah Christian team, and what they've done this year. Absolutely. Baker Woodward getting the trophy there. Dr. Robin Hines, the outgoing mm -hmm. executive director of Georgia High School. Need to see him retire. But boy, what a what a job he has done. He doesn't get enough credit for what he's done. During the tenure, the things that he's had to, to you know, to deal with, getting this event back here, um, video review, uh, even with basketball, every high school gym in the state has, has a shot clock. That wasn't in place before he came on. So, so much has changed and evolved with Georgia High School Athletics during his tenure. And we really owe him a, a debt of gratitude and thanks uh, for the work that he's done. He said he's not going to go far away. That's good. You know, he's going to be around, yeah. you know, and yeah. he's, it's, it's, it's a soft retirement date, but he does plan to retire at the end of next summer. Yeah. Dr. Hines, class yeah. act, as they welcome the 3A yeah. champions up now, the Saints from Cedar Grove High School. A nice touch by this team. And the moment is here. Let's go down to John Nelson. Thank you very much, Larry Smith. It is time to once again present the trophy in the AAA class. First and foremost, Class Acts from Savannah Christian. Fantastic season by all of you. Thanks for traveling from the coast. Great season for Baker Woodward and his team. But it's time to present the champs once again to put a familiar name to AAA. And to do that, it's the executive director of the Georgia High School Association, Dr. Robin Hines. Thank you. First off, I would like to congratulate Savannah Christian on an outstanding season. I also want to thank all of the fans from Savannah Christian that came out to support your guys. You've done it all year. Thank you very much. 
All right, now, welcome back to this stage, Coach. Yes, sir. So congratulations. It's with a great pleasure and an honor that on behalf of Alpha Insurance and the Georgia High School Association that we present you with the AAA State Championship trophies right behind you. Yeah. Coach, how does it feel being back and being on top? I'm so humble, man. Um, it feels really good to be back on here. This is actually my first time on the stage. Um, I've won one, but it's the first time in the Benz on the stage, so I'm blessed. I'm really proud of how these guys have overcome this year, and uh, the kids did really well today. Well, congratulations, Coach. Feel ease on this way. You start out two and five, but you scheduled that way on purpose. Then you run the table from there. What did you learn about this team in those first seven games where you didn't play a triple-A team until you hit region play? Well, I just learned that how resilient they were. And it's a really good team that we played today. Um, I give my hats off to them. Um, but these guys are fighters, man. They just went back, you know, to the drawing board, man, and just continued to get better. Uh, we got on a streak. I think it ended up eight consecutive games, man. And I just really like how these guys battled back, man. They challenged me. I challenged them. All right, they didn't fight it. They kept improving. And then we end up here finishing. One more challenge that you had this year has to do with this sign. Everybody was playing for 19 this year. What did Antoine mean to this program and what's it like to bring it home for him and with him? He meant a lot, man. He was the people's champ. He was the ultimate competitor, the ultimate teammate. So um, I'm just blessed that I had an opportunity to spend some time with him. Um, before he started playing, he was my ball boy, man. So his mom is here today. Shout out to Ruth. Um, we love you. We love Antoine. And, um, you know, hopefully we did really well. He's somewhere smiling for us right now. Second time in three, fourth time in six. We get to say it again. Cedar Grove. State champs at AAA. Let's send it back upstairs to Larry and Sam. John Nelson, thanks so much. And boy, what a story. The Cedar Grove team, as you mentioned, so much emotion and so much riding on this game. And so many times, you know, things that we don't get a chance to see as we're watching it from the outside. Uh, hard to sometimes measure the heart and soul of a champion, but certainly for Cedar Grove, the Saints, uh, they get it done. And what a job uh, by this program, by this coach, and by these players. Absolutely. Like I said, they get everybody's best. Yeah. Each and every Friday night, they get everybody's best because at Cedar Grove, when they get off the bus, they have to expect it. And here they are once again as state champions. Just a remarkable job. Yeah, and listening to Coach John Adams there, you know, it's funny that you know when a team and a coach have left it all on the field, including his voice. Uh, yeah, yeah. He, he did control this game the entire second half, but his voice is still out there. He was still cho coaching and yelling and teaching up until the very end. Absolutely. He put his all out there. He poured it all out on the field. And that's what you're supposed to do. You make it yeah. to the state championship game. It is the 15th game. Not everybody gets to play this game, so he's leaving it all on the field. That's what you're supposed to do. That's right. Cedar Grove, champions once again at Class 3A to uh, just one of several championships that we're going to celebrate and crown champions here on this final day of competition in downtown Atlanta. It was a thriller, the Class 3A game full of outstanding plays, great defensive efforts, and of course, two fan bases passionate, trying to urge their teams on to victory. But in the end, it's the Saints that go marching. Their coach, a year ago after they came up here and lost in a tough, difficult, emotional fashion, said sometimes the best team doesn't always win. But I think today we know the best team in Class 3A did win. 49-28, Cedar Grove, the champions over Savannah Christian. We take a timeout and step aside. We thank you for watching. Much more to come in the Class 5A championship is up next here on GPB. All Fridays in Georgia on GPB is presented by the Governor's Office of Highway Safety, reminding you to be safe on every trip. Buckle up, Georgia. Riding down the road and you're doing just fine When a car in front of you crosses over the line They're in your space, not looking at your face Distracted drivers all over the place Say, we will, we will buckle up Sing it, say 
say we will, we will buckle up. This program on GPB is made possible in part by supporters of the Georgia High School Association, including the following. Our number one priority is protecting our players. That's why we're writing new rules for the sport and developing innovative educational tools to protect our athletes. This is player protection. This is high school football. Football Fridays in Georgia on GPB is brought to you in part by DBHDD. Win by learning about safe usage of prescription opioids. Half of the nation's opioid overdoses happen right at home because people don't understand the dangers of taking an Oxy or Perk with a glass of alcohol for stress or to sleep. Learn how to protect your family from opioid overdose at opioidresponse.info. Cigna Healthcare is a proud partner of Georgia Public Broadcasting and Football Fridays. Cigna Healthcare's mission is to improve the health and vitality of those we serve. Visit Cigna.com to learn how you can support your physical and emotional well-being. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh I, I don't know about the TV, but uh, the burgers are ready. Yeah. Oh, burgers, right. burgers. I want a burger. All right, I'll line up. Let's do it. Welcome into the GBB Sports Tailgate Party presented by Regions. Get back in the game with Regions Bank. And I actually want to take a second to thank our friends at Regions for being an integral part of our high school football broadcast for all 27 seasons that high school football has been on the air with GPB. So thank you for your friendship and your partnership because it means everything to us. It is day three of the 2023 GHSA championships here on GPB. We just wrapped up the AAA matchup between Savannah Christian and Cedar Grove. Here is what happened. The Saints pulled it out over the Raiders 49 to 28 to win their second state title in three years, and their fourth time in six years. Coach Adams made an incredibly tough schedule this year, and it has paid off time after time. It's time to send it down to the field where Cody has our player of the game. Cody, go ahead and give him that towel. Yeah, he's got the towel already. He's got the, I think coach needed the towel. John Adams got doused with the Gatorade. It's EJ Colson, the quarterback from Cedar Grove. EJ, you were here a year ago. Heartbreaking fashion you guys lost. How does this feel compared to that? It feels amazing. Um, you know, after the game, we had a team meeting, and we were saying the game shouldn't even been that close to be decided by that. So um, we knew we were going to come out here today. We were going to put it, um, make sure we put a foot on the neck, and we were just going to have fun, play City Girl football. Yeah, you left no doubt today. What was working so well? Um, we just played. That's all it was. We played. We executed, we did everything that we were coached up to do. And when you do that, you're going to have good results. This season, you guys start two and five. Yes, could have gone a lot of different ways. Yes, the, the locker room could have gone split apart. What was it about this team that made you guys reel off eight straight after that? We came together. It was, I've never seen anything like it. We came together, we had a meeting, and we said we were going to do this. We were going to win eight straight, and we were going to win state. And to see it just come, it, it's crazy. All right, our Georgia Cotton Commission player of the game, E.J. Colson, headed to UCF next year, and Gus Malzahn was in the building to see it all. Hannah, back to you. Congratulations, EJ, and thank you to our friends at Georgia Cotton Commission as well. Many more players and teams to crown this week, but what about the players who have excelled all season long? Let's unveil our 2023 All-State team here at GPB, and we'll start with the All-